Are you ready? Are you ready? ready? It's time for Effingham Hearts Football on your home for local sports, 97.9 XFM. Let's go to the sideline for the pregame show. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the 2021 high school football season here on your home for Hearts Football, 97.9 XFM. I'm Greg Sapp, Dustin White alongside, even though it's our second 2021 season. I I was going to say 2021 (laughs) 2.0. This is officially the 2021 season. Man, it's all kinds of weird, but the weirdness is starting to fade, and everything's moving into rightness, and that means we have a nine-game football season, and hopefully three or four or five more after that the the normal the normalness of a nine game football season is one thing but it's a little weird because we're someplace that at least i've never been before nor i i mean we've been to decatur i have not been to saint Teresa high school i don't think ever for basketball or football i can't remember larry wilson might contradict that but i don't ever remember being here and we are glad to be here we're right in the heart of decatur St. Teresa High School is just right smack dab in the middle of everything here. Yep, get on Water Street and look on the look on the right side of the road when you're coming into town, and that's where you're going to find it. And and it's a it's a nice facility. We're actually sitting on the kind of the roof of the school, or at least the the overhang, and uh, got a good view of the field. Good crowd here. Good good number of Effingham folks here today, and and hopefully we'll have a good football game. This is one of those, Greg, where. We talked about it a little bit on the way here. I don't quite know how to figure it or what to expect, but uh, a couple of really solid programs you would hope that uh, would have a good game tonight. It's the inexperience factor that's getting me as far as Effingham. They have a quarterback that hasn't had many snaps at the varsity level. Our receiver core is gone. And, of course, you get all wistful and you think about the folks that are gone, like we've lost Mr. Thompson, we've lost uh, – you know, so many other people who've departed, and uh, Tristan Duncan, Tristan Duncan among them down at Truman State now. So it, it's going to be very interesting to find out how this team uh, quits itself. You know, you know, I find myself every year I say, how how are they going to win without Tristan Duncan? How are they going to win without Chase Wilmer? How are they going to win without all the big boys on the line? And and more often than not, I fool myself into thinking it's not going to be a good year. And most of the time, I turn out to be wrong. So I've given up trying to prognosticate. Kids grow up a lot in the span of a few months in this case, uh, you know, in the off season. And and the thing to remember about uh, the quarterback this year, Mr. Pontius, Tanner Pontius, is that if he'd been able if he'd been able to stay healthy last year, he might very well have been the guy throwing the passes last year. So there's a lot of confidence in him on the part of the Effingham coaching staff. And so. Depending on how things fill in around him, no reason to believe that they can't have some success this year. Effingham's first game, St. Teresa's first game, obviously, is, of course, Mark Ramsey, though, has had tremendous success here at St. Teresa and, of course, at Central A&M for more than 20 seasons before that and won a state championship at Central A&M, has played for a state championship here Mm -hmm. at St. Teresa. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to like about his coaching pedigree, but it's also interesting to remember that he and Brett Hefner, the Hearts varsity coach, coached together at Central A&M as Brett's first stop. Yeah, and, and so there's some familiarity there. Of course, I think both coaches would probably play that down at this point and say, you know, whatever tricks he had in the bag back then, a lot has happened in the, in the, in the years since, the decades since. And so, so you know, they can, it's an interesting side story. How much it'll factor into the game tonight, hard to say. Hard to say. I think we're going to have a break for our national anthem. So at this time, Caleb, let's send it back to the studios. More to come on the way in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located South Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center wishes area teams the best seasons ever. Evergreen has rehabbed to home suites for short-term rehab following hospitalization. They offer physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Go to Facebook at Evergreen Nursing Rehab for more information. Overlooking, as we mentioned earlier, the fact that this will actually be the second football season this year, the Effingham Hearts travel to Decatur tonight to begin the 2021 campaign. And St. Teresa, a new opponent for the Hearts, 
We mentioned Mark Ramsey and Brett Hefner's familiarity with each other. Ramsey again in his sixth season at St. Teresa. That's after 21 years at Central a and But as we said, Effingham's been on quite a roll of their own, and maybe we underemphasize this. The Hearts in the last three full seasons have won nine games, nine games, and 11 games, including a trip to the quarterfinals in 4A in 2019. And then last spring, they went 5-0, and and the only reason they weren't 6-0, and or at least didn't have an opportunity to be 6-0, and was because one of their opponents got COVIDed out. So we played five, won them all, and you won can, the Apollo. You can be diplomatic if you want, and I'll be the I'll be the rogue broadcaster on the uh, on the game tonight that says the Hearts would have definitely been 6-0 and if they'd gotten to play all six of their games last year. I think that's how they feel about the matter. So we'll see what happens. Again, St. Teresa has had an opportunity at the state championship, but the Hearts made the final four. Hearts are 4A, but you have all those wins for St. Teresa. So, you know, I, I think it's just going to be a heck of a game. I mean, St. Teresa, you look at last season, they went 6-0, and and they just beat the pants off of everybody they played. But then you look at who they played, and, you know, they, they play smaller schools than Effingham does. They, you know, it's, it's, it's just hard to figure. It, it really is. I mean, they clearly have some talented athletes. They're... Their running back tonight that Effingham is going to have to keep an eye on is going to be a big handful. Denim Cook, he has been he's been a starting running back for them for two years already, and you you can't replicate that. But they also don't throw the ball very much, and they've got a new quarterback this year. So, you know, Effingham has shown in the past that if they can kind of hone in on what you they know what you're going to do, then especially as the game wears on and they have guys going, you know, not going both ways and have a little bit more depth. And that's going to be the case when you're a bigger school with a deeper, you know, deeper roster and bigger enrollment. You know, in the third and fourth quarter, you start to separate yourself. So those are things that I look for. Now, who knows? I don't know anything about St. Teresa other than they win a bunch of games and they're pretty good and confident. So I'm not overlooking them. I'm simply saying that if Effingham has a path to victory, what I kind of said right then would be part of it. They have been awfully good, Effingham has, at fighting a war of attrition and usually winning that war because of just what Dustin said. And Coach Ramsey was quoted talking about that, about the fact they don't have the numbers that Effingham does. And so I liked his one quote. He said, if we start talking about we're tired, he says, I don't think Effingham's going to care whether we're tired. Yeah. We just have to keep on playing hard. Well, and, and any 2A coach who's getting ready to play a 4A school is going to say those things, right? right. I mean, uh, but, but by the same token, yeah. The pedigree is there, right? Like St. Teresa just wins football games. They they smash people. Uh, they're not used to losing. So, you know, I, I think they're going to come out ready to go trying to prove something tonight against a bigger school. If you're Effingham, if you can get out ahead early, you know, and kind of establish a little bit of uh, control of the game early, then that's going to be a position that these St. Teresa kids probably just aren't used to being in. But that's easier said than done. That's the truth. Let's talk about the starters for the Hearts. Here are the offensive starters for Effingham. At left tackle, Kobe Coburn. At left guard, Chase Kiefer. At center, Jacob Foster. At right guard, Riley Crane. At right tackle, Cohen Woods. At tight end, Connor Thompson, back for another year. And then, as far as the skill spots, wide receiver Armando Estrada, you remember him. He's a busy guy in special teams, especially last year. Wide receiver also Caden Walls. The fullback will be Evan Weymouth. He's been waiting for this opportunity. And the tailback, Keegan Baker. We got to see a lot of Keegan as the season wore on last spring. And then Tanner Pontius is the quarterback, hopefully going to stay healthy and have a heck of a season. Now those are the offensive starters. On defense, defensive end is Logan Heil. The defensive tackle, Charlie Ring. The defensive tackle, Blake Bushu. Defensive end, Maddox Burner. Linebackers, there are Dalton Fox and Edgar Castillo, two guys with experience. Also, the defensive backs, Damon Calber, Caden Gilman, Max Nelson, and Noah Jones, and Connor Simmons. Special teams, probably where Effingham has the most experience. Long snappers, Noah Jones, he played quarterback, you might remember, started one game for the Hearts this spring. Punter, Armando Estrada, the kicker, Ozzy Angel. And our Strata and Angel are also going to share the kick and kickoff duties. Uh, the holders, Zach Donaldson and Gage Gillum. 
punt returner John Westendorf, kick returner Keegan Baker, and Westendorf is going to help as a kick returner as well. So those are the kids Coach Hefner listed on Wednesday as starters, and assuming something didn't go awry in the last day or two of practice, that's who we're going to be talking about. And listen, let's let's be frank for a minute. Those are not a lot of names that you heard called on this airspace during the spring when they played their last season. There's a lot of guys who are getting their first taste of regular varsity playing time. And that's why I say it's so hard to figure. You, there's Some years there's a lot of known commodities. This spring there were a lot of known commodities on the team, especially on the defense and on the lines. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's not to say that they can't succeed this year. Like I said before, it just means I, I don't know yet. Going to have to see it. But they're a well-coached bunch, and this program is in such a good place right now that there's no reason to believe that they won't be prepared and ready. And if there's one thing Effingham has been able to do on a year-to-year -year basis, that is churn out some big, strong boys to play on the line. And like we said, have enough of those to go both ways, to have an offensive line and have a defensive line and get them some breaks. And a lot of other schools, even schools Effingham size sometimes, just do not have that luxury. And it is so important as a game wears on and also as the season wears on. Let's talk about who else is playing tonight. Robinson at Charleston is not playing. Robinson got COVIDed out. So Charleston is sitting idle this first week due to COVID at Robinson. Clinton's at Lincoln, Muhammad Seymour at Canton, Mattoon at Troy Triad, Martinville Limestone at Mount Zion, and Mount Vernon at Taylorville. So that's who the other Apollo schools are playing. Casey Westfield's at Alney Richland County. Newton is at Paris. That ought to be a good one with the resurgence of Paris in recent years. And Shelbyville at Cumberland, Vandalia at Pena. Flora gets to go to Christopher Ziegler Royalton, so they had a trip about as far as us tonight. <laughs> so those are the matchups that Caleb will be looking whether he can keep an eye on and get us some scores. Now that's what's happening on 97.9 XFM over on KJ Country at 102.3, your home for NASCAR. We have Xfinity action from Daytona International Raceway. BD's taking care of that race. It got underway at 6, which means we might or might not be done before they are. So keep that in mind. Uh, Friday night, Saturday night set up for NASCAR this weekend from Daytona on your home for NASCAR. Also want to quickly mention, we'll talk more about it at halftime, the Wooden Bat Tournament tomorrow at Teutopolis High School. Four baseball games, 9, 11, 1, and 3. We're going to broadcast all four of those games. The first two will be on KJ Country at 102.3. The last two will be on 97.9 XFM as we get set up to take care of NASCAR tomorrow evening on KJ. So are we busy? Well, yeah, we are. And we have more baseball Monday night. So, hey, it's just uh, almost endless. And before I forget, happy birthday, Matt Robinson. This is the day that the man, the legend, Matt Robinson. And I even know how old he is because he's exactly 20 years younger than me. Mm. Well, I'll refrain from taking a guess to, I, apparently, <laughs> now that you say that, to avoid hurting multiple people's feelings. <laughs> 97.9 XFM, WXEF, and Effingham. We are ready to begin another 2021 high school football season. Effingham's going to receive. Let's see what happens. Good to have you with us for Hearts Football. Kickoff is short. That's to Hart's benefit, but it bounces over the up man's head. It's taken by one of the Hart's deep return men. He gets it out across the 20-yard line and is taken down at about the 23-yard line. Man who returned that ball for Effingham is John Westendorf, and he ends up at the 23-yard line. That's where the Hart's will set up shop to start the season. I am glad to have Mr. Dustin White back, best stat man, best sidekick, best color man in football. And I'm glad to have yeah. him here and wow. the amazingly talented thespian, C.J. Schmidt, capturing all the video. No, that's a compliment, C.J. Thespian is a good thing. All right, we're ready. First play from scrimmage. Hart shift in the backfield. Pontius up under center. There's the snap. Hand off to the Keegan Baker, and he got hit for a two-yard loss. Holy cow. That uh, play didn't develop as the hearts had hoped. 
taken down back there by Justice Chapman, and we're going to talk about him on offense too. But a loss of two back to the 21, so it's second and 12. Yeah, uh, St. Teresa's got a lot of kids back on their defense. There are a couple of pretty good linebackers graduated off of their team, but uh, still a lot of guys who got in on the tackle sheet last year, so this is going to be a challenge for Effingham. Let's bring a man in motion from the far side. Handoff to the deep back Baker, and he didn't even barely get the handoff taken before somebody dove in there and took him down. Credit to Denham Cook, who's going to be going both ways tonight. He's their top running back, too, and he caused a loss back to the 16. So all of a sudden, it's third and 17. Yeah, those are not broken plays either. Those are just guys finding the gaps in the line. And in that case, Keegan Baker couldn't even couldn't even make a cut before he was going down. The first time he tried to, to go to his right, that time they went left of center and had no luck that way either. There's a little bit of wind, but certainly nothing to keep the hearts from throwing if they decide to. They bring a man from the far side and a whistle. And we might have had more than one person in motion. I see St. Teresa applauding. I think they agree with me. Yeah, procedure penalty on the hearts. So that's five yards farther back. So now it's back to the 12. And all of a sudden, it's third and 22. Quite the inauspicious start for the Effingham offense here. Is have it, lost yardage every time they've tried to do anything so far. If we go on to 9-0 and from this point, this is going to be something we can say, boy, remember how we started. Uh -huh. Pontius went to the sidelines to get the play. He'll talk it over. Again, Pontius just a junior this year, so if things work well, we'll have a two-year quarterback starter. From the shotgun here, good snap. Pontius going to run, and they've got him, and he fell down and lost the ball, and it's recovered by St. Teresa near the goal line. Well, that first possession didn't work at all. No, Pontius trying to roll right, and he just flat lost the football. Had somebody bearing down on him, and number uh, 23 for St. Teresa, Bryson Hendricks, tried to tried to stay on his feet, but uh, crawled across the goal line. His knee was down at the two-yard line. So a loss to the two, and it was on the 17, Dustin, is that correct? No, it was on the 11, because they lost yardage, remember? So, so yeah, so... Loss so, of nine on the play. So they have it. St. Teresa has it. First and goal on the Hearts two-yard line. And Brummer, their quarterback, hands off. And up the middle is Denham Rice just off tackle in for the touchdown. So, so far, nothing good to write home about from here in Decatur. Two-yard run as we'll be talking about uh, that running back combo a lot tonight. That time... Did Cook, I'm sorry, I got so busy worrying about the play. Did Cook carry? That was or actually was Christian Harper. Yeah, it was nine. It was All Christian right. Harper. He's a younger player, and Cook has been disciplining him, getting him ready. So Harper took that two yard run and took it into the end zone. And St. Teresa has a quick 6 0 lead. The score comes with 10 06 left in the opening quarter. They're going to kick for one. There's the placement. Kicks low. And in fact, it is just over the crossbar. Boy, he just got enough air under him. So St. Teresa leads at 7 0. 10 0 6 to go. Opening quarterback with a kickoff in a minute on 97 9 XFM. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Keller Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. We're back at Decatur. Keegan Baker took the kickoff, returned it to the 25, lost the handle on it. St. Teresa has recovered that fumble. And again, the Bulldogs with great field position. First and 10 at Effingham's 24-yard line. Yep, uh, Baker took that one at the 14, 
Got about. Uh, They're going to respot it, Dustin. Yeah, he got about 10 yards, uh, 11 yards, 12 yards down the field and then lost the football. They're going to spot it at Effingham's 26 rather than Effingham's 24. That first drive, by the way, one play, two yards of score. Here is Cook, and he stiff armed one heart defender and gets it to the 20. So he turned nothing into something and gained six yards to the Effingham 20 yard line. It'll bring up second and four. See so how 10.06 in the opening quarter, and Effingham trails 7 0 already on one play, two yard drive, set up obviously by the turnover, and now St. Teresa's got to ride back. So first and four at Effingham's 20. Quarterback in the gun here. And their running back, or one of the linemen, jumped. Hmm. So there's a procedure penalty, and that'll send it back five yards. There's the first beneficial thing for Effingham so yeah, far. Yeah, right guard, I believe it was over there. Got a little jumpy, so we'll move it back to the 25, and Effingham will take any break they can get because that <laughs> is the first one that they've gotten since the game started. Nose of the football on Effingham's 25-yard line from the shotgun. Brummer looks to throw, goes across the middle. It's incomplete. Some contact, but they were both going for the ball, and it comes up incomplete, and so that'll make it third and nine. Third and nine. St. Teresa with the ball on Effingham's 25-yard line. Yeah, Joe Brummer, the quarterback, the sophomore quarterback for the St. Teresa team, taking his first chance at a pass and coming up empty. So third down coming up here. Brummer again from the shotgun, hands it off. Cook coming to the near side. Hearts need a tackle. He gets away from a couple of kids, goes out of bounds at about the 15. I think he did get the first down. Boy, Cook is solidly built. You look at him compared to the Effingham uh, DBs that were trying to bring him down as he finished off that run, and he is a formidable presence there, uh, and he picked up 11 yards, got it to the 14. So a new set of downs for Mount Ter for uh, St. Teresa. Yeah, he is probably going to go over 3,000 yards rushing this season. Here's a handoff. Cook again. This time the Hearts did a good job of covering him up, and he's lost about a half a yard. Well, they're going to give him no gain still at the 14. Oh, he, yeah, I mean, he was sitting at 2,944 yards for his career coming into this game. In his uh, sophomore season, he ran for 2,017. So he's... He should. He should eclipse three and probably four. <laughs> Crazy numbers. All right. New set. Well, they call it second down and ten. They're going to throw. They throw it in the flats. It's caught right across the middle. And a good job by the receiver of eluding tacklers. And he gets it to the five. So he's very near a first down. The catch was made there by number four for St. Teresa. Yeah, Trey Spence is a 6'150 pound senior, and he moves the football to the five, so it is third and about a half a yard. Yeah, nine yard pickup there, so and a nine and some change. He's one of their only receivers back on the team that had much of any action last year. Ball's at the five. Hearts really, really, really don't want another score on there. Ledger, but there goes Cook, and he dives across the end line, and he's in for the touchdown. Nice job, because when he started to go down, he reached both hands out across the goal line and gets credited with the touchdown. So Denham Cook feeling good as he comes off the field, and all of a sudden, St. Teresa leads at 13 to nothing, trying for the extra point. That score comes with 7.42 to go in the first quarter. They'll kick for one, and the kicker, by the by, is Billy Geis. Kicks up, looks good, it is good. So it's 14-0 St. Teresa, and we barely said howdy do. 7.42 to go, opening quarter here at St. Teresa. Back with a kickoff in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Member FDIC. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located south Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com.
All right, there's the kickoff, and it goes into the end zone, so it'll be a touchback. It'll come out to Effingham's 20, and at least this time the Hearts will have a chance to catch their breath. Already down 14 to nothing. The first play ended up in a fumble at Effingham's 2 that St. Therese carried in for the score. That last drive was a 26-yard drive, six plays, took 216, highlighted by the run by Denham in for the score, yeah, and the kick was extra good. Was another awesome. short drive facilitated by an Effingham fumble, so two turnovers, two easy scores for St. Teresa. Potty is the handoff, moving and grooving, and it gets loose, and he's close to a first down. Nice run from a cut to the far side. And Effingham got a nice run out of John Westendorf. He's very near a first down. And, in fact, they say move the chains. A gain from the 20 to the 30, just enough for the first down for John Westendorf. And something positive here for the Hearts. Yeah, you'll take it. Pontius up under center. Going to the deep back, that's Westendorf again. And he's driving and diving and got about five out to the 35-yard line. Yeah, just, to, you know, start moving the football a little bit. There's nothing you can do. You're down a couple of touchdowns, but this game has barely begun. And all you can do is chip away. And so get a couple of positive plays going in a row. Looks like it's just short of the 35 at the 34, so a four-yard pickup there for Westendorf. Hearts have yet to throw. They barely had the opportunity to move the football, though. And on the ground, it's working. Keep it there. Westendorf still on his feet. Heck of a run. Mm -hmm. Got out near the 38-yard line. Thought he was going to be stopped for no gain and turned it into about a three-yard gallop. Yeah, put his shoulder down and just uh, just kept it moving. And so gets it, uh, I don't know, what, 37, something like that? That's what they officially call it, so a gain of two. So third down and about three. Yep. 6.14 to go, opening quarter again. St. Teresa already in front, 14 to nothing. Next week we're home, and that's also the conference opener. Muhammad Seymour will be at Klosterman Field, 7 o'clock next Friday night. Pontius, deep back. Westendorf, much better attack by St. Teresa that time, and he lost yardage. Maybe no gain. Checking the spot, I guess no gain. So that'll bring up fourth down, and still about three. And I've got to figure this close to the end zone, the heart's going to be punting it away. And that means Pontius doesn't have to leave the field. He's out here. Of course, knowing Coach Hefner, that also means that there might be a surprise in the bag of tricks here. Looks like Pontius is going to punt. Low snap. He's got it. Gets it away. Not too deep. It goes at about the 45 of St. Teresa and dies at about the 39-yard line. So he kicked from around the 30, or maybe the 25, and it hits just inside the 40-yard line. So first and 10 at the 39, that's where St. Teresa will set up to start this drive. So a normal field to start a drive. So let's see what the Hearts defense can do now. Good to see the offense at least have a chance to get their legs under themselves and add a little positivity on that drive. Going to start from the shotgun. Brummer, a low snap, and it got away from him, but there was a, a signal. Let's see who this foul's on. Actually, it's on St. Teresa. Another procedure penalty on them. They might like that five yards because I'm not sure they would have ended up with the football the way that ball was squirting away from Brummer, their quarterback, <laughs> as it is back four yards. So now it's on the 34 of St. Teresa, and it's first and 15. 5-10 to go opening quarter of the 2021 football season. There's the handoff going to the far side. That's a new kid on the block. He gets to the sideline, and he finally got run out of bounds. He's near Effingham's. 30-yard line, and a nice run there for St. Teresa's number 23. That's Bryce, Bryson Hendricks, and a great run. He's finally driven out on the far sideline as bumping him out was Noah Jones, but a great run. They'll mark it at the Hart's 24-yard line. So, uh, excuse me, the Hart's 34-yard line. Mm -hmm. 
Good gain, though. 32-yard pickup. So we'll take that. Yeah. New set of downs for St. Teresa. So we heard about some kids. We've seen some other kids as they hand off. This time, they go back to Old Reliable. And Denham Cook gets it inside Effingham's 30. Hearts come up and get some help from Dalton Fox, who we'll be talking about a lot on defense this season. He makes the stop, the gain to the 29. So from the 34 to the 29, a gain of five, so it's second and five. And just a little jab, step, and cut there for Cook and able to plow forward for five yards. Quarterback Brummer stays in the shotgun. Here's another handoff to oh. Cook and big collision. <laughs> Holy cow, he hits you with that helmet, and it's like hitting a bowling ball. Yeah, I mean, one Effingham player just sent got sent backwards. You know, that head pin, I guess it was, <laughs> on the Effingham defensive attack as he just <laughs> threw himself in there and then <laughs> kept those legs churning. The next thing you know, he's working for the first down. And he got it to the 23. So a new set of downs here for the Bulldogs. 4.09 to play opening quarter. It's already 14-0 St. Teresa. Here comes Cook to the near side, and he gets away from one defender who kind of waved as he went by, and he finally ends up in for a touchdown. He just keeps churning. He's got a low center of gravity. He's so strong, and he just ran over Hart's players, taking it to the house. So a 21-yard touchdown run, and all of a sudden it's, 20 to nothing, 23 yard line, mm -hmm. thank you. So uh, touchdown, and that extends St. Teresa's lead to 20 to nothing. And they'll go for the extra point try here. As Heis will kick again, good snap placement, kicks up, looks good to me. The officials agree, and just like that, St. Teresa leads the Hearts 21 to nothing. 3.55 to go in the opening quarter. Back in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center wishes area teams the best seasons ever. Evergreen has rehabbed to home suites for short-term rehab following hospitalization. They offer physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Go to Facebook at Evergreen Nursing Rehab for more information. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. Here's the kickoff. It heads deep near the end zone and goes over Keegan Baker's head into the end zone, so it'll be a touchback again. First and 10 for the Hearts at their 20. Yeah, Keegan was having to drift back for that one, so he's better off just letting it go over his head and into the end zone because he tries to make an over-the-shoulder catch inside the five uh, with all his momentum carrying him the wrong way. I don't think it's probably going to work out too well. And I'll bet the sidelines wouldn't be pleased. So it'll be first and 10 at the 20. That's where the Hearts set up shop with 3.55 to go in the opening quarter. It's been all St. Teresa. They already lead it 21 to nothing. Let's see what the Hearts can do. They did move the ball better on that last possession, so let's see what happens. Tanner Pontius, the junior quarterback, up under center on first and 10. There's the snap. Looking to throw. Rolling to the far side. Pass is... Caught, I think, or it is caught. Nice work as they threw to the far side. He went down to his knees, and that's why I want to make sure that he gathered it in and didn't catch it on the hop, but he did make the catch, and that's Caden Walls. And a pass is complete out to the 35-yard line. So a 15-yard pass completion on a pass to Caden Walls. Hart's first, first down of the evening. Handoff up the middle, Keegan Baker driving and diving, and he got it out across the 35 and close to the 37-yard line. Hearts are little by little starting to get their land legs on offense. Got to find a way to slow down this St. Teresa team, though. And admittedly, the Bulldogs had tremendous field position their first two possessions. Pontius up under center. Looking to throw, has time, now steps up, now runs, tuck it in, son. He is being dragged over toward the sidelines by three defenders, and Pontius is taken down. We'll see where they eventually 
plant this football. Well, and you talk about tucking it in. Yeah, he's holding the ball out. Mm -hmm. It makes you a little nervous when three different players are tackling him and the fourth one flying in by the time it's all said and done. Already fumbled twice. He won't be losing it anymore. It ends up at the 36-yard line. So it's third down and nine. Yeah, it's a loss of a couple of yards there. Third and nine. 2-2-2 two, two, two to go in the first quarter. Hart's already down 21 to nothing. Opener of this season. Glad to have you with us. Pontius coming to the near side. Wants to throw. Turns it up. There's the pass. It's caught and knocked away. Good defense by St. Teresa as Armando Estrada was the intended receiver. But a nice job by Bryson Hendricks, who we already talked about being a good receiver. Did a heck of a job knocking that one away. Yeah, and... and uh, Pontius throws a good ball. That one had plenty of zip on it, and he got it to where he needed to, but just a nice play on the other end to break that thing up once the receiver got a hand on it. And Effingham again looking at a punt situation pretty well inside its own territory. Fourth down and nine. Here's the snap. Good snap. High punt. Not really deep. They call fair catch, and the ball is taken at about the 30, maybe just inside the 30-yard line. So that will be the worst field position St. Teresa will have had to start a drive so far tonight. 2.04 to go in the first quarter. St. Teresa in front of the hearts, 21 to nothing. Want to remind you that the JFLers will be at it again tomorrow. This is week three for them. They will be at Mount Zion tomorrow. Games at 10, 11, 30, 1, and 2, 30. Fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grades respectively. So see some future hearts up at Mount Zion tomorrow. See what happens here as they start in the shotgun. There's the snap. Here's the handoff. They come to the far, now to the near side. And he's stepping over people and eventually is driven out of bounds. Ball carrier that time was Christian Harper. It is advanced just across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Dalton Fox among those in on the stop, but it is enough for a first down. Yeah, 16-yard pickup as that drive started on the 30-yard line and uh, up toward midfield in a hurry. Timeout. Looks like St. Teresa wants to call time. So timeout, Bulldogs. Minute 43 to go, opening quarter. St. Teresa 21, hearts nothing here on 97.9 XFM. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Member FDIC. All right, we're back at Decatur at St. Teresa High School, opener of this 2021 football season. It's already 21 to nothing, St. Teresa. Let's see what happens here as they have a new set of downs after a 16-yard gain. There's a snap in the quarterback. Quarterback rolling to the far side, throws across his body. It's down the middle. There's all kinds of contact, and there's a really, 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 really late play. I mean, they definitely tripped over each other. That was 21 for Effingham. Damon Cal Calvert going up against uh, Zakai Hayes, number three of, uh, of uh, St. Teresa. By the way, throwing that pass was Caden Wilkins. Number 10 took the snap there for St. Teresa, a different quarterback. But uh, the ball was well over the head of all that now. You could say, is it a closer is it closer to the receiver if he doesn't get knocked down? Yeah, but I would do wonder if they just kind of got their feet tangled up. doesn't really matter. The officials have decided that's a pass interference call against Effingham and moving it downfield. So they're going to go back to the line of scrimmage. Now they're going... Well, or is it against Mount? Is it there? They're going to bring it back to line of scrimmage. Now they're going to walk off 15 yards. 15 yards. Line of scrimmage was right about the 30. So the advance will be to Effingham's 39 yard line. So, new set of downs. Now into Effingham territory at the 39. 
minute 37 to go in the third in the first quarter. Boy, it's been all St. Teresa. Here's a throw, caught, and he stepped out of bounds. And eventually, the Hearts made sure he was out of bounds. The receiver was Thomas Pokorinski. And he advances the football to the Hearts 31-yard line. So it's second and about three. Maybe a long two, actually. So the nose of the football on Effingham's 31-yard line. He did step out of bounds, so that stopped the clock with a minute 31 to go in this opening quarter. And you are correct. Their quarterback now is Caden Wilkins. This is the senior we'd heard about. Here's a handoff, and Denham Cook just dives into people and takes it inside Effingham's 25-yard line. Boy, he is a low. Uh, uh, it's something else. I mean, he's a, he is a big boy. Uh, 5'10", 225, so he's not... He's not tall, of course, right. but he's just square. I mean, it's like getting plowed into by a tree trunk. Nobody nobody had to introduce him to the weight room this season. It's a gain to the 24, let's say. And a new set of downs. From the shotgun here, bring a man in motion. There's the snap. Here's the handoff. It's Cook. And he got his feet out from under him. He managed to keep his balance, though, and gets it to the yeah. 22. Used one hand to hold himself up while keeping the football off the turf. Kind of did one of those. It looked like almost like a one-handed push-up. You know, you see guys do that. Got back on his feet, pushed forward, and somehow managed to squeeze about a, about a three-yard gain out of the deal. That was a remarkable run, regardless of how much he gained. And it is to the 21. That was something. Well, Man. and then four Effingham jerseys swarmed him under afterwards, and now we're getting another timeout from the St. Teresa sideline. Yeah, they know they're down in Effingham territory, so they want to make the most of this. So they call time of 27 seconds left in the first quarter. 21 nothing St. Teresa. Back in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota. Located South Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center wishes area teams the best seasons ever. Evergreen has rehabbed to home suites for short-term rehab following hospitalization. They offer physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Go to Facebook at Evergreen Nursing Rehab for more information. Illinois. St. Teresa gets the snap. They go to the deep drop. They throw down the middle, and the receiver ended up past and through the end zone. So it's an incomplete pass, but boy, he hit him right on number four. That was Trey Spence, the receiver. And Joe Brummer back in under center for St. Teresa threw a good ball, but it just let Spence, I mean, a half a step too far in the back of the end zone. I was The only thing I was concerned about for Spence besides staying in bounds was, was he going to crash into the, the padding on the uh, on the goal post there. It's right there, but uh, he avoided it, but also couldn't stay in bounds for the touchdown. So third down now. They're going to loft it out there. Got a man, got a defender. He's caught it wow. for the touchdown. I mean. You that, can't play better defense. Yeah, Damon Calber was, had the inside position. Honestly, was leaning on him a little bit. I thought maybe they could have possibly flagged him. And Zakai Hayes, number three, somehow managed to make a diving catch in the end zone. 21-yarder. And uh, it's a four-score deficit for the Hearts just before the first quarter ends. 27 nothing, and we're still in the first quarter. 14 seconds left. They'll kick for one. This has just been a remarkable performance by St. Teresa. High snap, but they get it down. There's the kick. It ends up in the trees behind the end zone. It's good, and it's 28 nothing, St. Teresa. 14 seconds left in the first quarter quarter. Back with a kickoff in a minute on 97.9 XFM. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, 
and SUVs today. There's the kickoff. It's returned by Westendorf. He got it out across the 25-yard line. Call it about the 26, and that's where the Hearts will set up shop, and they will get one playoff at least before the end of the first quarter. Yeah, the kicker, Billy Geist, decided he wanted to he, – he kicked the last two in the end zone. He decided no touchbacks this time. We'll leave it a little short and get some action for our special teams, guys. So first and ten for the Hearts, and it starts at their 27-yard line again. St. Teresa's already scored four touchdowns, and we're still wrapping up the first quarter. Got a handoff. Westendorf up the middle. Nice hole in the middle, and he gets it out across the 35-yard line. Nice play and very near a first down. If you're looking for silver lining, John Westendorf's first quarter probably is the one that you'll have to turn to. It's a gain to the 38. That ends the first quarter. After one, it's St. Teresa, 28, hearts nothing. Second quarter on the way in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Member FDIC. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located south Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. Okay, well, that first quarter's over. Time to turn the page. Man, 28 nothing, St. Teresa. That's a heavy page to turn. If you're Effingham, you know, you, you, you're one quarter into it. You can't give up yet, of course. But, boy, you didn't see any cracks that you're looking for to try and expose in this St. Teresa offense. Well, I'm not sure what they were because not only do they have – a legitimate stud in the backfield running the football, but they have handed it to two or three other guys who have looked just as good. They seem to have two quarterbacks who can throw the ball pretty well, and <laughs> that catch by Zakai Hayes in the end zone tells you that they've got at least one receiver who's pretty good, and that's uh, without Trey Spence having also caught a couple of passes. So you tell me what the weaknesses are. I'm not real certain at this point. Effingham's coaches know more than I do, and I'm sure they're fi trying to figure it out, but 28 nothing already, and then that's not even addressing the other side of the football where Effingham has been able to move it a little bit offensively, but it's been a challenge because this uh, St. Three, there's been a lot of awful lot of blue jerseys in the uh, Effingham backfield early on. Westendorf's had some success running the football. They did complete a pass, so there are some positives on offense. But boy, you're right as far as defense. This is like the blitzkrieg. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's not to say that Effingham's making mistakes defensively. It's really getting overpowered right now. And we talked about trying to set a tone early on. Well, a team set a tone, and that was the home team. Let's see what Pontius does from the shotgun. He decides to keep and turns it up the field and a pretty good run out across the 40-yard line before they stop him. Yep. So that's something else to make St. Teresa think about. So there's a positive. Got pinballed around quite a bit there as he busted through the line and bounced from defender to defender before finally hitting the turf. Gets to the 42, so about a four-yard pickup. Armando Estrada checks in at the far receiver side of things. Caden Walls here on the near side. Let's see what the hearts have cooking. Westendorf lined up beside the quarterback. They fake it to him and Pontius keeps. Yeah. I take that back. They did hand off. No, it is Pontius. Yeah. I thought he kept. A little bit of option there uh, as as he and he and Westendorf kind of shared the ball for ran alongside each other for a second there. We got up to the 49, so a nice pickup. Another seven yards gained and another first down for Effingham. So they've showed signs of moving the ball successfully. It'd be nice to get some points on well, the board, get rid of that goose egg. Some points and get your defense off the field for a little while. They have had to work awfully hard early on. Pontius from the shotgun on first and ten. Again, Westendorf lines up beside him in this set. There's the handoff. Nice spin move by Westendorf. Great game. He might have another first down near or maybe inside the St. Teresa 40-yard line. 
Yeah, and they're moving the chains, so wherever he got to, it's enough for another first down. So first down's on back-to-back -back plays. That was pretty much the same play as far as I could tell, only this time instead of Pontius keeping, he let Westendorf take it, and they are spotting it right at the 40, so a nine-yard pickup. So they're having a tough time deciding who to key on, at least at this point, and the Hearts are using that deception to their advantage. So a new set of downs, first and 10 at St. Teresa's 40. But it's 28 nothing St. Teresa. The Hearts have to score before they can do anything about that. Pontius, a nice carry. Gets it inside the 35. All of a sudden, the Hearts are moving the football. Yeah, I mean, again, pretty close to the same formation and play again. And and they're just sort of alternating uh, Pontius and, and then Westendorf and now Pontius again. And, and chunking up as much yardage as they have uh, during any stretch of this game. That's inside the, inside the 35 to the 34, so another six-yard pickup. They're coming in chunks, these yards are now. So that's that's something to be happy about. Pontius, again from the shotgun. Good snap. Faked the handoff, kept it, runs up the middle, gets it inside the 30, another Effingham first down. Yeah, different play design that time as Westendorf went from Pontius's right to his left, took the fake handoff, and then Pontius drove it right up the middle. And again, a good good chunky yardage uh, up to the 27 so a seven yard pickup and uh, Effingham in business a little bit here first and 10 for Effingham again at St. Teresa's 27 yard line gosh the one thing you want to do is hang on to the football here now that you have a good drive going 28 nothing St. Teresa hearts would love to get one on the board here from the shotgun, the handoff, Pontius, no handoff. He kept, turned it up the middle, got it inside the 25 to about the 22-yard line. The flag comes in from the sideline, though, and I wonder, Kobe Coburn was setting a, a, a block to seal off there, and it looked like a pretty good one to me, but they're signaling a hold, and that's going to walk Effingham back. Yeah, you almost always know who that's going to go against. It's almost always the offense. So they're lining it up. Flags thrown at about Effingham or about uh, St. Teresa's 28-yard line. So let's see where they mark it off. The coach says, "Yeah, we want to back them up." Hold on, Effingham. They'll mark it from the 26, so that'll move it out to the 36, 10 yards on a hold. But Effingham still in good field position. We've talked so much about Mark Ramsey. I haven't talked about the St. Teresa defensive coordinator. That's Britt Miller. And if you're a fighting Illini football fan, you ought to remember Britt Miller. Oh, sure. Had a great career at Illinois. So they, <laughs> they have some pedigree on that coaching staff. So with that, it's first and 19. This time, Pontius keeps, gets it inside the 30. Boy, Effingham's getting big chunks of yardage now. And Pontius, who's big kid, yeah. can take it to you. And makes a good me, game makes, almost back to the line of scrimmage. The it original. makes me a little nervous when he takes yeah. it up the middle like that. But he's uh, he's taking some hits, and he's gotten up from every one of them so far. Got to a yard from the original line of scrimmage on this drive, so it's second and 11. Inside the 30 again at the 28. 8.45 to go in this second quarter. Hart's keeping it on the ground, so the clock's going fast. But, boy, they just need to score. Yeah, I mean, whatever happens in this game, you just want to turn the tides of it and show yourself that you can do it, right? And get to get some, some positive momentum going, and that certainly has happened here in the second quarter. There's the snap. Pontius again. Now this time he's coming to the near side. Get him a block. They can't. He dives forward. Might have got a yard. Got hit a lick, but comes up ticking. Nice tackle there by Tyreek Cole. But Pontius does get positive yardage. Advances the football to St. Teresa's 26. The problem with that play is that if Caden Walls releases the block that he's trying to make out there, there were two other guys that were going to come in and get him. So it was a simple case of being outnumbered, and uh, there just wasn't a lot of room for Pontius to run, even as he came around the end. Got Estrada here to the near side split out wide. They send Caden Walls to the other side. Now they bring Armando across the field. Meanwhile, Pontius wanted to throw, and it is thrown and caught and dropped by Estrada. Yeah, it was behind Estrada. He tried to 
tried to come back for it, but uh, not able to reach it. A little bit of a throw under duress for Pontius. So after completing his first pass attempt of the night, he's gone incomplete on his last couple. Line of scrimmage remains the 26, and we've got a whistle and a time for the Hearts. 7.36 to go second quarter. St. Teresa 28, Effingham nothing here on 97.9 XFM. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center wishes area teams the best seasons ever. Evergreen has rehabbed to home suites for short-term rehab following hospitalization. They offer physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Go to Facebook at Evergreen Nursing Rehab for more information. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. 7.36 to go second quarter. We're at St. Teresa. It's the start of the 2021 official football season. St. Teresa already leads the Hearts 28 to nothing, but the Hearts have held them scoreless in the second quarter. Yeah, and the way things were going, you know, <laughs> that's that's a hard thing to do. Would have been a hard thing to imagine uh, or to predict. But, uh, yeah, things have calmed down a little bit, mostly because Effingham has been able to sustain a drive. They have had the ball for the entirety of this second quarter and uh, that have a chance it, here. Makes it very hard for St. Teresa to score because the Hearts have the ball. Pontia steps up and got tackled in backfield. Wow. Nice effort, and who's out there? Yeah, it's Denim Cook. He can play offense, he can play defense. Potty has tried to step up, and Cook was having none of it. Drops him back at the 32-yard line. So that ends that drive, as that was the fourth down play. But uh, Effingham, you know, some positives to take away from it. Got your defense a breather, but now, I mean, if you want to have any chance of winning this game, you can't be allowing any more scores here in this first half. First and 10 for St. Teresa at their 32-yard line. This drive starts with 7.32 remaining in the second quarter. Next week, the Hearts home opener, conference opener, the Muhammad Seymour. All we play is Bulldogs. Awesome. The Muhammad Seymour Bulldogs. Well, you said something about a pedigree here in uh, St. Teresa earlier, and I thought about one, asking if that pun was intended or not, but uh, <laughs> didn't have time. I'm not smart enough. Here's a run. And a good gain out across or right at the 40-yard line. As this time, it's Joe Bremer at quarterback for St. Teresa. And they give him to the 41, Dustin. So line of scrimmage was the 34, so a gain of 7 to the 41-yard line. 7.08 to go second quarter. 28-0 St. Teresa. Bremer in the shotgun, second and short. He keeps pitch to the guy on this side of the field, and he got run out of bounds. They tried to fake it to, Col to Cook. Instead, they came to the near side to Christian Harper, and the Hearts did a good job of sealing that off, and they ran him out of bounds. So no gain, as it turns out, still at the 41. So third and three, maybe a long three. Be huge, wouldn't it, to force a punt? Yes, sir. And we have a flag thrown, and the Hearts jump because I think I saw St. Teresa jump. It's moving in the backfield, I thought. One of the running backs alongside the quarterback, it seemed like perhaps Denim Cook flinched. Yep, it is on St. Teresa. The official was in the Hearts backfield. He saw whatever happened along the line that caused a Hart defender to jump, and it is a procedure penalty on St. Teresa. So they'll mark it back to the 36. And I think our officials confused about where the line of scrimmage was. The line of scrimmage was the 36. So it's third and nine <laughs> at the 34. There's a bad snap. Here's the throw though as he got it, the quarterback got it. Now the pass is complete and the gain ends up near a first down. The ball was snapped to the left of the quarterback. Brummer hustled back and got it, threw it out in the left flats. Christian Harper made the catch out there. He's a little worse for wear on that one, though. He is coming up a little lame and noticeably limping. The gain is not enough for a first down, and it's fourth and two now. And the officials call time to get Harper off the field. Again, this is the young man that Denham Cook has been working with 
to succeed him after Denham Cook graduates this year. Harper is moving better as he gets toward the sideline. And that's good news for St. Teresa. So it's fourth and three for the Bulldogs. I am. You're still wondering about that penalty and how they marked it off, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> like they didn't mark them off enough? Well. The I official did. came to the middle, turned around, then turned the other way, and then moved to two yards, right? That's what I thought. Well, anyway, let's see what happens. Big play here, fourth and three. There's the handoff, and, of course, they gave it to Cook, and the hearts might have held. I'll say this, the Effingham sideline didn't react to it, so that's my first clue that I'm probably wrong. But uh, what's not wrong is handing the ball to Denham Cook in a short yardage situation. And I haven't seen a first down signal. They do signal first down now. As if to answer you. Yes. He must have known I was waiting. So it is a first down. Cook does get the one yard. Well, he needed three, and he got the one. So it's a gain to the 44, and it's a new set of downs here for St. Teresa. Yeah, he's up to 69 yards on 10 carries with a couple of scores. Little by little, at least the yards are getting harder to come by for St. Teresa. You're looking for positives here. They're going to throw, and Ooh. down goes Brunner. Big sack back at the 30-yard oh. line. Yeah, somebody blew an assignment there. Shout and that out was to uh, Max Nelson. Yeah. Max Nelson's benefit is just nobody picked him up. And, and I mean, listen, there's nothing the Brummer could do. That worked out mighty fine for Effingham. Yeah. Dustin's exactly right. Brummer had nowhere to go, and Nelson took care of him. And I like the way he wrapped him up, didn't let him get away. And a drop back and a loss back to the 30. So second and 24. Yeah, 14 yard loss. Back to their 30. Brummer again. Snap. He's going deep. Got a man there, and it's incomplete. So that'll bring up a third and 24. Yeah, and he's upset about the blocking, I think, as he is uh, talking to one of his linemen. And he's he's shaking his right hand, his throwing hand. It was, somebody made some contact with him as he threw that ball. So St. Teresa getting a few bumps and bruises here as we wind our way through this second quarter. Again, it's a war of attrition often in high school football. I know it's 28 to nothing. I know. I know all you people saying, oh, come on, Greg. But, hey, we're in the second quarter. Going to throw, going deep to the Hearts corner, and the Hearts knock it away. Great defense over there as Osvaldo Angel, heck of a job knocking that ball away on the sidelines. That'll bring up fourth down and 24, and it looks like St. Teresa is going to have punt. First time they'll have to give the ball up all night. Yeah, they have not had they have not had to punt, but uh, yeah, you would think here on fourth and twenty-four you're going to have to. And we'll see what they've got in this area. Especially being twenty-eight to nothing up. I mean, why would you do anything fancy schmancy? Just give it to the other team. High snap. There's the kick. It's a good kick. It is. And it's grabbed, though, by Westendorf at about the 40, and he gets it near the 45 before he goes down. So the Hearts are going to have pretty good field position to set up this drive. 5.01 left. Second quarter as the Hearts start this drive. Finally, Dustin. Finally, they stopped St. Teresa. Yep, but uh, as a good punt, St. Teresa's quarterback, uh, or at least one of their quarterbacks, Joe Brummer, booted that one 36 yards downfield and reversed the field a little bit. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you'll take the pauses where you can get them after the way that first quarter went. And, and Effingham has really uh, really managed to, to keep itself in the game here. First down at the 43 is where they mark it. That's where the Hearts will start this drive again with 5.01 left before halftime. Pontius will start from the gun. Westendorf beside him. Here's the handoff, Westendorf. There's a flag in the middle of the play. Let's see what that's about. Westendorf went to the right side and got a decent gain on first down. Now let's see what the flag's about. It's thrown just shy of midfield. And it looks like a hold. And that's never good news for the offense. Now it looks like they're gonna set that flag at the at the 46-yard line, so maybe a three-yard pickup, but then a 10 yards back. 
Makes sense to me, Dustin. Let's see whether that's how it turns out. The official made it loud enough I almost heard him up here. Yeah, he's got no mic on, but he certainly... Uh, see, now he goes... The official started walking against St. Teresa. Then he turns it around. I saw him grin, so he knew he went the wrong way. Well, you mentioned it being first game for everybody. That includes, includes the officials. True that. The ball is eventually spotted at the 36. So there was a gain to the 46, uh -huh. and then the 10-yard walk-off on the, on the hold. 4.55 to go second quarter. It's first and 17 for the Hearts. Pontius from the shotgun. Hands it off to Estrada. Armando Estrada turns it up the middle. Good run. Still on his feet. He gets it out the midfield. Maybe fell across into St. Teresa territory. Very near a first down. And it was first and 17, so that's quite a play. Yeah, Estrada coming over from one of the wideout spots and, and taking that handoff. So, you know, opening up the playbook a little bit, trying to do some different things with Greffingham and getting the ball up to the 48-yard line. So a big gain, second and three now, where it was first and 17, I think. Second and three now. Handoff, no, Pontius keeps, and they bump him and bang him, and I think, Tanner, it's time to go down. <laughs> and he does. But he did keep it in St. Teresa territory. I don't think he got the first down. Yeah, it looks like they might have given him a yard there. Call it St. Teresa's 48. 47, they say, on the scoreboard. And beings they are in the middle of the field, and I'm not. I'll go with that. Yeah, we're along the 20-yard line down here, so our advantage point not great for all parts of the field necessarily. Body is up under center here, slipped, but he got the handoff made, and Westendorf has the first down. Yeah, kept his feet under him just long enough to make the exchange. <laughs> It was okay for Pontius to fall down since he'd made the handoff. And Westendorf takes care of the rest. He gets it inside St. Teresa's 45-yard line to the 43. So a gain of four. And a new set of downs for the Hearts. Yeah, John up to 45 yards on eight carries. Let's keep it rolling here. Hand off to Westendorf, and he gets close to the 40 on first down. 3.10 to go before halftime. Boy, wouldn't it be sweet to get a score before the break. Much better second quarter for the Hearts. Much better. After they pretty much got overwhelmed in the first period, they played much better football here in the second quarter. Yeah, I mean, the words running clock were definitely running through the back of my head a little bit after that first quarter, but Effingham has settled things down significantly. Gain of two, Dustin. It's second and eight. Pontius gets away from one defender. Now he gets sacked for a huge loss. He's back near midfield. Elijah Wills was the one who eventually wrapped him up and threw him to the turf. <laughs> and Elijah Wills was one of their better defensive players last year. And First time of this uh, this evening I've heard his name called, but that was a big play. Got another timeout. 2.35 to go, second quarter. It's St. Teresa 28, Effingham nothing here on 97.9 XFM. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Member FDIC. Yes, I understand what you're saying, Mr. Woldman, and thanks for the score. End of the first quarter, it's Taylorville 7, Mount Vernon nothing, so thank you. We understand from Caleb from BD, a rain delay at Daytona. Shocking news there. So a delay in our NASCAR coverage over on KJ Country at 102.3. Here it's third and 18. Hearts need a big play. Looking to throw. Pontius across the middle. Now he tucks it in. He's going to run. He's near the 45. He's near the 40, and down he goes. Close. He got a lot of it back. Hearts have to get to the 31 uh, to get a first looking, down. I was looking at the wrong marker. It's good. It's everybody's first game. Yep, good gain, but uh, not near enough. So, yes, to Mr. Woltman's editorial comment, I can't argue that. And, uh, again, it's 7-0 Taylorville leading Mount Vernon after one. 
Here with 2.02 to go in the second quarter, St. Teresa leading Effingham 28 to nothing. Again, the Hearts have played much, much better in this second period as they've had the ball the whole second period. Pretty much. All but two minutes and 31 seconds of it. Potty is from the shotgun. Good snap. Coming to the far side. Now turns it up. Got a good run going. Gets it to the 40. So it's going to make it about... Slap. That's it. That was fourth down. I'm sorry that I hadn't double-checked. That's fourth down. He did not get the first down. So the ball goes over to St. Teresa on downs. So the exchange of the football comes with a minute 37 to go in the second quarter. But boy, a lot, to, a lot to be pleased about if you're watching the hearts here in this second quarter, especially compared to that first period. 28-0 St. Teresa, but all 28 of that came in the first quarter. So with a minute 37 and St. Teresa with the ball on their own 39, Brummer in a quarterback. He's looking to throw, going deep. They have a man there, so to the hearts, and the ball's knocked away. Another great play by Angel. Well, I tell you, Osvaldo Angel has made two great plays in the defensive secondary for the hearts. And he really, he timed that one up perfectly. Stayed stride for stride with his man. I believe that uh, the intended receiver, Trey Spence, is down there. And, uh, yeah, just reached up and poked it away as the ball got there. He can't uh, draw it up much better than that. Minute and a half to go, second quarter. Bringing up a second and ten. Again, next week, the Hearts home opener, conference opener, hosting Muhammad Seymour. Kickoff at 7. We'll have it for you right here on 97.9 XFM. Brummer again from the gun, hands it off. Cook hadn't had any action for a while, and the Hearts sent about six guys after him. They found a way to slow him down. St. Teresa, they're going to have to raise tuition a little bit this year, next year, and get themselves a new PA system for this field, Mike. That's the only only complaint I have so far is halftime. You can't understand what they're saying. Sounded like Charlie Brown's teacher to me. <laughs> that's, that's about right. Ball is at the 44 of St. Teresa. Third and six. We're under a minute to go before halftime now. Brummer stays in a quarterback from the shotgun. Handoff. Cook fell down. No, they kept it with Brummer. He went up the middle. He's got a big gain. He's getting it near Effingham's 40-yard line by the time they take him down. Boy, that looks like soccer or rugby. There's a scrum out there in the middle of the field. I don't know if it was by design that Denham Cook was going to the turf looking like he dropped the football, but it sure Helped to help to add to the misdirection of the play fake there. Certainly gave one announcer fits. As it is, it's a gain to the to the 40. Here's a deep pass, and he's got him this time. Touchdown, St. Teresa. Boy, laid it right in the lap of Trey Spence. Pretty pass. Brummer to Spence. And it's a 40-yard completion. And just like that, it's 34 to nothing, St. Teresa. Score comes with 30 seconds left in the second quarter. Well, that's disappointing after the Hearts had played much better in this second period, but with a big strike adds to the St. Teresa advantage. It's 34-0. They'll kick for one. Need another guy on the line. Now we're good. Again, the score comes with 30 seconds left. Boy, they still needed one more guy. Play clock's down to 10. I don't think I've ever seen a delay a game on an extra point. There's the snap. Here's the kick. It looks good. It is just inside the upright. 35-0, St. Teresa. Home run ball. Helps them add to their lead. It's 35-zip, 30 seconds to go. Back with the kickoff in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located south Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center wishes area teams the best seasons ever. Evergreen has rehab to home suites for short-term rehab following hospitalization. They offer physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Go to Facebook at Evergreen Nursing Rehab for more information. All right, it was a four-play drive, took 60 yards, took a minute seven. 
highlighted by that 40-yard scoring strike by Joe Brummer into the lap of Trey Spence. Kick was good, and St. Teresa has extended their lead to 35 to nothing. Here's the kickoff. Boots it from the 40, and a little pooch kick didn't go very far. Hart's got it on the hop, and they fielded it, and that's the bottom line there. It was grabbed by Max Nelson, the up back. And Effingham, if nothing else, has good field position. 28 seconds left, though, before halftime. Now 35 nothing, St. Teresa. You just don't know. When you have so much inexperience as Effingham has, you just don't know what might happen. And goodness knows, St. Teresa is a talented ball club. Couple of turnovers, though, Dustin. And we talk about turnovers. Gave them great field position for the for, for those first two mm -hmm. scores. Yeah, you put yourself behind the eight ball right off the bat. Right off the bat. See what happens here. Pontius gets the handoff away. They go to the far side. And they get it out across the 40. That's Westendorf. And that'll take it down to 15, and the Hearts aren't going to stop the clock by any means. So that is the last play of the first half of this football game. Running down to 5-4-3, and that's going to be halftime. At the break here at Decatur, it's St. Teresa 35, Effingham nothing. Dustin has stats. We'll check with Caleb about any scores. And we'll let you know what's to come tomorrow on a very busy sports weekend. All that on the way in a minute on 97.9 and XFM. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. This is the Compass Advisory Group Halftime Show. For all of your insurance needs, contact Corey McDaniel at 347-9697. <laughs> We are back in Decatur at St. Teresa High School. At the half, it's been all St. Teresa. They lead the Hearts 35 to nothing. Four of those five touchdowns came in the first quarter and were set up by Hearts miscues. In fact, the first drive was one play for two yards. And that, and Dustin, I'm going to have to prevail on you. I know you're trying to get your stats done, too. I need to double check on who scored the touchdowns. Who scored the touchdowns for St. Teresa? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, Christian Harper scored their first one. Thanks. That was a two-yard touchdown run. And then the next uh, next couple were Denham Cook, 22-yard run. Thank you. I have everything except the names. Yep. So Cook had a couple of touchdowns, and then you had a touchdown catch. The first one went to Zakai Hayes, number three. And Trey Spence was the man who caught that 40-yarder right pretty, before halftime. Thank you, Dustin. I'll let you get back to work. Dustin keeps the best stats in the Midwest, if not a larger chunk of the state or the nation. So we'll let him get back to those. So recapping the scoring, the first score came with 10.02 to go in the first quarter, and it was at the end of a two-play drive that took one play after the Hearts had lost the football. and. St. Teresa recovered it. A four-second drive, and that two-yard run was by Harper. Christian Harper scored from two out. The kick was good. It came a 10.06. I'm sorry, I said 10.02, 10.06. And it was 7-0 St. Teresa. They got it right back on another turnover. This time they got it at, their, at the Hart's 26-yard line. And a six-play drive ensued that took 2.16 and was highlighted by Cook with the 22-yard run. The kick was good, and it was 14 to nothing, with 7.42 still to go in the first quarter. They scored again with 3.55 to go in the first quarter, and that was at the end of a four-play 61-yard drive, highlighted by a 23-yard run by Cook, Denham Cook. The kick was good. That took a minute 16, and just like that, 3.55 still to go in the first quarter, and it was 21 to nothing, St. Teresa. And they scored again in the first quarter, this time with 14 seconds left in the period, at the end of a six-play 70-yard drive. 
took a minute 50 and was highlighted by Zakai Hayes' three-yard run. Kick again was good, and all, all of a sudden it was 28 to nothing, St. Teresa after the first quarter. Hearts controlled the ball most of the second quarter, moved it, weren't able to punch it into the end zone, and actually forced a punt. So you could see the momentum start to shift at least a little, but then St. Teresa scored on the big strike play with 40 seconds left in the quarter and the half at the end of a four-play, 60-yard drive, a 40-yard pass play, and that was good from Brummer to Trey Spence. The kick again was good. Took a minute seven on that drive, and it was 35-0 St. Teresa, and that's where things stand here at halftime. So that's a recap on the scoring. Dustin's working on the numbers. We'll check scores and what else is to come on this busy sports weekend. All on the way in a minute here on 97.9 XFM. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Member FDIC. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located South Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. We are back at St. Teresa High School right here in the heart of Decatur. It's an old campus, but kind of charming in its way. They have one end of the football field goes into a creek, and they have a couple of big trees planted along the creek. So if you try an extra point, the trees catch the football, keep it from going into the creek. On the other end, looks like Crosley Field or how the outfield used to be at the Houston ballpark. It's uphill. So if you score a touchdown on that end, you score, and then you have to run uphill. It's kind of like punishment. Have a nice array of flags down there. So that's the south end zone, and that looks pretty cool, too. So charming place. First, ten, first chance for me to be here. Yeah, I've never, never been before, but uh, they've treated us well, uh, aside from the football game, of course. But uh, you can't hardly blame can't hardly blame them for that one. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a nice place, and, and St. Teresa certainly got a nice team, and they showed it in that first half. If you're Fill ready us for, in, brother. If you're ready for some stats, I've got them. Uh, St. Teresa outgained Effingham 218 to 96 in that first Ooh. half of play. Uh, 28 plays from scrimmage for the Bulldogs, 31 for the Hearts. Uh, Effingham ran the ball 28 times in that first half, gained 81 yards on the ground. St. Teresa, 18 rushing plays for 134 yards and three scores. Hearts barely got a chance to throw it. Only three pass attempts, one completed for 15 yards. St. Teresa put the ball in the air 10 times, completed five of them for 84 yards and two more scores. Uh, no interceptions for either team. So, uh, again, 28 plays, 218 yards for St. Teresa, 31 plays, 90 six for the hearts uh, first downs Effingham had six of them uh, five on the ground one through the air st. Teresa moved the chains 11 times nine times on the ground twice through the air uh, turnover wise Effingham did turn it over a couple of times in the first half two fumbles both of those lost st. Teresa did not turn over the football uh, penalties Effingham four of them for 40 yards st. Teresa three for 15 yards time of possession just to go, goes to show that this never doesn't always tell the whole story. <laughs> St. Teresa had the ball for just 9:02 out of the uh, 24 minutes in that first uh, half of play. Effingham had the football 14 minutes and 58 seconds, but did not manage to get the ball in the end zone or put any points on the board. Uh, looking at the St. Teresa individual numbers, as far as running the football, uh, Denham Cook leading the way, 73 yards on 11 carries, including scores of 5 and 23 yards. Uh, Bryson Hendricks had one carry for 32 yards, and then Christian Harper, three runs for 18 yards, including the first touchdown of the game for these Bulldogs, a two-yard punch in, so he had the other rushing touchdown for the home team here, and then their, one of their quarterbacks, uh, Joe Brummer, he's taken a majority of the snaps. There was one, one uh, possession there where he got some time off, but uh, Brummer has thrown most of the passes. He's also ran the ball. Uh, he's run the ball three times for a total of 11 yards. Uh, 
Brummer has put it in the air nine times, completed four of them for 76 yards. That includes uh, touchdown passes of 21 and 40 yards. Uh, the only other completion of the game went to Caden Wilkins. He only threw one pass uh, when he was in at quarterback for the Bulldogs, but he did complete it for eight yards. Uh, that completion, I'm just going to get this out of the way now because it was to number 11 for uh, St. Teresa, who is uh, first name Thomas, last name about uh, 15 letters, most of them <laughs> most of them consonants. Uh, Pokerwinski, I'm going to go with that, okay? It looks like it to me. P-O-K-R-Z-Y-W-I-N-S-K-I. Kind of like that guy that used to pitch for the Braves, Folden Evitz. Yeah, Folden Evitz, you know. I, 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 I heard that one enough, was able to get that one down. I was just thinking about Mark Gruzelonic today, by the way, too. <laughs> the old second base. Yeah, we don't have to get into why, but that was uh, that was on my mind today, too, for other reasons. Oh, 90s Cubs. Yeah. Thanks. Well, I was actually... The context was people who played for the Expos. I gotta, oh, I gotta tell yes. you, but uh, he was. He did. He started his career with the Expos. Yes. Played for the Dodgers and mm -hmm. a couple other teams too. Anyway, I digress. He caught a Thomas Pokerwinski. Thomas Pokerwinski caught one for eight yards. Far from the leading receiver though for Saint Teresa, Trey Spence had two receptions for 49 yards, including a 40-yard touchdown catch. Uh, Zakai Hayes, his only reception of the night was a 21-yard score. That was a really good catch. It was right in front of us here on this end of the field, and I'm not exactly sure how he got to it. He was well covered, but was able to make the, the diving grab in the end zone. And then Harper, Christian Harper, also had uh, one reception to go with his three runs. Uh, he had one catch for six yards. Uh, we'll see. He came up a little bit lame uh, after catching that pass. We'll see how much action he gets in the second half, especially with St. Teresa probably feeling like they've got this game in pretty good shape, but uh, well, that remains to be seen in the final 24 minutes of action. As far as punts, St. Teresa did have to punt the ball one time, and that was Joe Brummer as well. It was a 36-yard kick. It was a really good one. Uh, Bryson Hendricks and Trey Spence had the two fumble recoveries for the Bulldogs, one of those on a play from scrimmage and the other one on a kick return. Uh, both of those deep in Effingham territory set up the scores, like you said, really got, uh, they got the hearts behind the eight ball from the start. So there's a look at uh, some of the individual numbers for St. Teresa, switching gears to Effingham now, uh, leading uh, the running attack for the Hearts was John Westendorf, uh, 10 carries for 50 yards. So he did a nice job for, for Effingham. Uh, Tanner Pontius, 19 yards on 14 carries. So it's been kind of a mixed bag for him. He's had he's had runs of 7, 7, and 8 yards, but he's also been thrown for losses of 9 a couple of times. He's lost 6 on another play. So a bit of a mixed bag for the uh, Hearts quarterback running the football. Uh, Keegan Baker... He got a couple carries early, three runs, uh, lost four yards, and, and Effingham kind of decided to go a different direction. I, you know, just size-wise, I think Westendorf gives you a better look against the the physicality of the St. Uh, St. Teresa defense. And so Keegan only three carries in the first half, and then Armando Estrada one run for 16 yards. Uh, Pontius again only three pass attempts, completed one of them for 15 yards. That was to Caden well Walls. So uh, Caden Walls the only reception of the game for Effingham. That's something you're not used to seeing. Uh, you know, Brett Hefner likes to throw the ball mm -hmm. on offense, but uh, the, the openings just haven't been there, uh, you know, as far as play calling, what seems to fit, and so they haven't put it in the air much. Pontius threw a really good ball on that reception and clearly has a good arm, but only three pass attempts, one of them completed for 15 yards. Uh, Pontius punted twice. 58 yards total, so 29-yard average. You had Westendorf with a 9-yard punt return. Also 19 yards worth of kicking returns on two kickoff returns. Uh, Keegan Baker had a 12-yard kickoff return. And Max Nelson also fell on uh, that uh, pooch kick right before the end of the first half. And with that... I have completed everything. Notice I didn't tell you about Effingham's kickoffs because they did not get a chance to kick off. That will change here to begin the second half. But the only number that matters is 35, and that's what St. Teresa has against Effingham zero as we wind our way through halftime here, Greg. Thank you, Dustin. Let's check scores. Caleb, what do you have? All right, taking a look at more football scores. Currently at the half, it is Taylorville leading Mount Vernon 7 to nothing. Also, Newton leads Paris in the third quarter, 7-0 as well. It is Cumberland leading Shelbyville, 30-14. Mount Zion is currently shutting out Bantonville Limestone, 17-0. It is Flora over Christopher Ziegler-Royalton, 13-6. 
Pena has a big lead over Vandalia, 23-7 in the second quarter. And currently at the half, it is Troy Triad over Matt Toon, 6 to nothing. Taking a look at some high school baseball today, it was Altamont over St. Anthony, 4 to nothing. Count Herrick Beecher City gets the win over Neoga, 10 to 1. And it was Windsor Stewartson Strasburg over Brownstown St. Elmo, 14 to 3. And that's the scores, gentlemen. Thank you, Caleb. Hey, and more about that Altamont win over St. Anthony in baseball. You talk about a kid giving his dad a birthday present. Mason Robinson threw a no-hitter for Aldemont this afternoon in that game on his dad Matt's birthday. Well, you know what they always say, all your athletic ability comes from your mom's side of the family. <laughs> well, we don't want Matt to get a big head, so we'll, we'll share that. But congratulations, Mason, on the no-hitter. And uh, St. Anthony and Aldemont, a couple of really good baseball teams going at each other, and we'll see... The Bulldogs tomorrow at the Wooden Bat Tournament. Dustin and I will go home, sleep fast, and be over at T-Town's Wooden Shoe Field at 9 o'clock. And we'll see Tatopolis and North Clay and St. Anthony and Dietrich all in that four-team event. Uh, two games at 9 and 11. The, those will be on KJ Country. The winners will play, or the losers will play at 1 o'clock, and the winners will play at 3 o'clock. And whoever wins that 3 o'clock game will be the champs. So that's the plan for the Wooden Bat Tournament. Again, it starts at 9 o'clock. First two games will be on KJ, and then the afternoon affairs will be on 97.9 XFM. T-Town and Dietrich at, at 9, then North Clay and St. Anthony at 11. Winners play at 3 after the losers play at 1. Only thing I can guarantee you is that everyone's jersey is going to be sweaty by the time the day is over with and that uh, probably more than one kid is going to be shaking the bees out of their hands before uh, before all four of those games get played. I remember in high school playing those wooden bat tournaments, and it's a, it's a whole different ball game, whole different ball game from using the metal bat. Uh, I know they've done some things with the, with the uh, aluminum bat since, since I've been played back in the Stone Age, but uh, it's they still jump a lot uh, compared to those wooden bats. So that'll be interesting. Hopefully hopefully uh, some good action over there at Wooden Shoe Field. So we'll look forward to bringing you those four games. Again, the last we knew, there was rain at Daytona as they're trying to get the Xfinity race in. And don't forget, we'll have the cup race at 5 o'clock tomorrow from Daytona. And that will be on your home for NASCAR, KJ Country at 102.3. We'll have baseball for you Monday as Tatopoulos plays Aldemont. That's at Aldemont at 430. So that ought to be a great ball game between two really great programs. And Aldemont uh, will have some momentum from that big win tonight. Now, I'm going to double check. I have an update here. Thanks, Mr. Waltman. After one, it's Canton seven, Muhammad Seymour six. I'm not sure that Caleb had that. If you did, I apologize, Caleb. Taylorville leading Mount Vernon at halftime seven to nothing. And uh, Triad was leading Mattoon six nothing at halftime. So those scores. Again, next week, the Hearts home conference opener playing host to Muhammad Seymour. 7 o'clock kickoff, hear it right here on 97.9 XFM and 97.9 XFM.com. All that said, I think we're up to date. We do have more baseball, by the way, next week. Uh, we have a Saturday morning game next week at 10, so keep that in mind. So something for everybody, and we'll do our best to keep you up to date online. Be sure always to check every day on 979xfm.com and kjcountry.com. Millie does a yeoman's job of getting all the information posted. By the way, just the first couple of weeks of the season, thank you coaches, thank you ADs. You are doing a wonderful job of getting us information on all the fall sports. Thanks so much because I know we're coming back after an uncertain time and we're all praying it won't get too uncertain this time. But uh, thank you. Just want to say thanks to everybody who's getting us information. We really do appreciate that. And CJ says you can go to 97.9 XFM. Explain this to me. Yeah, but I don't know what that means. You can see the film on YouTube later. Yep. Thank you, no matter what I said. You can find it on YouTube. And CJ tells me that will be 979XFM. That's the YouTube channel. Yeah, Thank that's, you. That's the name of the YouTube channel. Thank you. 
when I don't know anything technical, and I hardly ever do, I yield to these gentlemen. So check it out. And CJ will have it up quicker than anybody's business. So here we go. Second half kickoff. Hearts down 35 to nothing. Let's hope Coach Hefter came up with lots of cool stuff at halftime. He usually does. There's the return. It's out across the 20-yard line, and that's where they drop Christian Harper. So St. Teresa will set it up first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. Harper must be okay he took that kick. That was a deep, uh, a deep one. Armando Estrada was the kickoff man for Effingham and put it back at the 5. So a nice deep kick. To, to get this second half started. He had a lot of success last year. He and Angel will share on those duties. Uh, Effingham blessed in special teams this year. All right, first and 10, 22. It's already 35 nothing St. Teresa's, so the Hearts job one. Stop the Bulldogs on this first drive. Brummer's back at quarterback. Here's the handoff, and boy, they went after Denham, and even though he got back up and made a three-yard gain, <clears throat> What an effort as the Hearts got in there. Logan Heil got in there in a hurry on defense, slowed him down. He still didn't go down. A couple other guys came up and helped. It turns out to be a three-yard gain to the 25, and it's second and seven. I mean, I don't know what you could tell Logan Heil that he did wrong there. He got there. He got his arms around him, and he just got dragged. It's just a big, strong kid. Heil back on the line again this year. They run it up the middle. No, they don't run it up the middle. In fact, down he goes as Brummer ended up getting sacked after he, well, sacked or he did manage to get it forward, but he ended up losing yardage on the play back to the 24. Yeah, maybe just, you know, if you're if St. Teresa trying a couple things, you know, because they're in a position to do it or trying to get a little too cute, I'm not sure, but uh, that didn't work. And they just went offside here. Before the snap, they had a receiver several yards down the field, so there's a procedure penalty on St. Teresa, and it'll come back five. So that'll make it third and 13. It had been third and eight. The five-yard walk-off I'm watching. Yes, it is five yards. Back to, had a little trouble with that in the first half. It's back to the 18, and I, I, it's third and 13. I still maintain that. Knowing Coach Hefner like I do, I think he would have been going nuts on the sideline if they had actually messed that up. So it might have been my mistake. Third and 13, back to throw. Brummer across the middle. He's got a man, and he overthrew him. Passes incomplete, and that will bring up fourth down. Yeah, number 42 for St. Teresa. Matt Brummer was down the field a little bit, but uh, that ball was well over his head, so either a miscommunication on the route or one of those where Joe just had to get rid of it in a hurry. Yeah, St. Therese still with the starters out there and a three and out. Yep. So just what the doctor ordered for the hearts. Yeah, going to be punting from this, uh, the, the line of scrimmage. I don't know, setting it down at the 18 instead of the 19 for whatever reason. You'll take that, and then by the time he takes the snap, uh, Joe Brummer is going to be inside the five. There's the snap. He has to come up for it. Oh, he got it off the front of his foot. It's a low liner. And the hearts get away with it, or from it, which is wise because I don't think there's any way to pick that one up. So it's tagged out by St. Teresa. It's close to midfield, but the bottom line is the hearts are going to start this drive in St. Teresa territory. It's first and 10 at the 48. The drive starts with 10.32 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, not nearly as good as the first punt that Bremer pulled off. He had a really good one there toward the end of the first half. He shanked that one. So let's see what happens. Tanner Pontius starts up under center here. Handoff up the gut. Westendorf, nice gain. Got it out across the 45 and near the 40 before they drove him back. Good gain by John Westendorf on first down. They'll score it at the 42-yard line. So a gain of six, and it's second and four. Nice gain. Again, the Hearts start this drive in St. Teresa territory. Pontius again up under center. There's the snap. Handoff coming up the middle again. Westendorf off tackle that time. Got it inside the 40, near the 37-yard line. And it is enough for a Hearts first down. So move the chains as the ball is advanced to the 37-yard line. And it's a new set of downs for Effingham. 35-0 uh, St. Teresa, though, so hearts are looking for some 
Good news anywhere. Westendorf diving and driving and gets it inside the 35 to about the 32-yard line. Boys running hard. Yeah, I think that, you know, one of the takeaways from this game, you know, whatever the final score ends up being, is that uh, John, you've got something in John Westendorf here, which is, I mean, not a... I mean, as far as varsity snaps last year, I'm, you know, racking my brain. I don't think there were many, if any, at all. He's just doing a heck of a job, and this team with this lack of experience, kids have a chance to win a spot. Yeah. Here's a snap rolling out. Pontius looking to the far side. There's the pass. It oh, is caught and dropped. Goodness. Holy cow. Yeah, it's a good throw. Good throw on the run. Pontius had a lot of zip on it, rolling to his right and hit Caden Walls in the chest. But Caden going down to his knees to get it, not able to pull it in. Got a St. Teresa player a little slow to get up there back in the in the, uh, in the the secondary. Yeah, he's back inside the 15-yard line, still on his back. Might be cramping. I mean, it's cooled down considerably, but uh, I did wonder. You know, it's been it's been hot, and so you know, I wondered if uh, if that would come up in this game at all. It's it's been breezy. It's been cool, so uh, not as bad as I thought it would have been. But still, I think a thing you have to just automatically be thinking about in August playing football. Trainer Troy for is here for Methingham, and he's out. St. Therese folks are over taking a look at the young man who's still on his back. He is moving a lot. That's mm -hmm. always one thing I try to tell people right at, at the get-go, that the young man is moving everything, so that's always the first thing I concern myself about. Yeah, it looks like they're stretching the left leg, and I would almost guarantee it's a cramp of some kind. Yeah, certainly expected this warm, as you said, that's, and this early in the season. And that's an important guy. That's Trey Spencer. So he's uh, Or Trey Spence, I should say. So he's... Uh, he is a pretty big factor in their passing game. He's had, uh, had one big catch in the first half, a 40-yard touchdown, and he's not putting a lot of weight currently on that uh, on that left leg. So we'll see what the what the deal is. But uh, yeah, a talented player that's going to be out for at least a little bit for the home teamer. 8:55 to go in the third quarter. Got a light out on the scoreboard. Sorry. Yeah. 8:55 to go in the third quarter. Spent still taking his time getting off the field. Even as he's gone from one end of the field to the other, though, you can see him walking a little more easily. So. Oh, goody. Well, that means we're going to have to make some changes. Daytona's been rained out for tonight, and they'll resume it at 11.30 tomorrow. Mm. Now, we're supposed to have baseball games at 9 and 11 on KJ, so obviously that means that 11 o'clock game's going to have to move. I mean, we may just move all four of them to, to 97.9. You might double-check with Flex, Caleb, if you would, just so he knows what's going on. Thank you. Pontius carries this time. Got it inside the 30, near a first down couple of yards away. Again, our plan was to have the first two games tomorrow on KJ and then have the second two games on 97.9 because we'll have NASCAR the cup race later in the day on Saturday. So we thought we'd split it up. Well, if we're going to have NASCAR at 11.30, we might just do all four baseball games on the X. Another St. Teresa player limping off the field. One of their linebackers this time. So Bulldogs still with a comfortable lead, but dropping like flies out there. Balls at St. Teresa's 29. There's the snap. Pontius keeps. Ooh, and he dives forward and got a yard out of the deal. And he's really close to the first down. He's short, but he's really close. So let's see what's happening here. It was first. Well, now you got an Effingham player, Jacob Foster, having some trouble getting up off the turf. Yeah, he's the center for this club. And... Trainer Troy getting his road work in. And, and to me, that's a little more concerning. He's grabbing at one of his knees. But, but he's, he's up. He's up and trotting off the field anyway. And I think, meanwhile, they're going to, they're going to, they're talking about measuring. No. So we're going to take a break. Both teams come off the field. So, Caleb, let's take a 30-second break. It's 35 nothing. St. Teresa in front here on 97.9 XFM. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center wishes area teams the best seasons ever. Evergreen has rehabbed to home suites for short-term rehab following hospitalization. They offer physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Go to Facebook at Evergreen Nursing Rehab for more information. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. All 
All right, quick timeout. It was for an exchange of downs as the Hearts did not get the first down, so that gave it to St. Teresa first and 10 at their 27-yard line. New quarterback for St. Teresa, that's Caden Wilkins, who we saw a little bit earlier in the game. His handoff was to Thomas Porkowinski, and he got a yard, so it's second and nine. Going to throw, going to the far side of the field to nobody. Pass comes up incomplete. Wilkins aired it out and overthrew his intended receiver. That's Zakai Hayes, who scored a touchdown earlier in the game. Incomplete pass stops clock was 7.33 to go in the third and brings up a third and 11. They lost a yard on first down. I apologize. I said they gained a yard. They lost a yard. So now after the incompletion, it's third and 11. Back to throw again. They throw it across the middle. There's the catch by the big lad, and he gets it out across the 30 to about the 32. As Denham Cook made the catch in the heart's good pursuit, a short gain after that screen pass. It didn't set up much, and it's fourth down. They gave him six. It's fourth and five. So that was the shortest possession of all time almost on four downs anyway. And St. Teresa quickly is going to be punting it away here. Seven minutes to go in the third quarter. There is the punt. Here come the hearts. There is the kick. And the hearts say get away from it. And it's a good idea because the ball came actually back St. Teresa's way and ended up about the Effingham 45-yard line. Let's see where the exact spot is. 35-0 St. Teresa. So 28 of those came in the first quarter. Since then, 7 nothing game. I know you can't do anything about getting rid of those 28 points, but the Hearts certainly have played much more representative football since then. They'll call it the 44. Ball's not quite to the 45. So 44-yard line of Effingham. That's where the Hearts will start this drive. 6.47 to go in the third. Pontius up under center, handoff, Westendorf gets it out near midfield before they trip him up, so pretty good gain on first down. Went right off tackle, off center rather, and they'll score it at the 49, Dustin, so from the 44 to the 49. Break up the rail splitters, halftime, Lincoln, 50, Clinton, nothing. Lincoln would 0 for season this spring, and they're leading 50 to nothing tonight at halftime. Yeah, Clinton, one of the teams that St. Teresa rolled this spring as well, so a bit smaller school than Lincoln, but for Lincoln, you'll take any win you can get. Pontius looking to throw, Knight tucks it in, coming to the near side, and eventually goes out of bounds, got it inside the 40-yard line. I wished he'd have got down a little quicker, but he got the first down, and that's the bottom line, and he's <laughs> living to tell about it. Ah, you just... You're young, and you just do all kinds of things, and gets old guys like me nervous. But he held on to the football, got the first down, and it's first and 10 for Effingham at St. Teresa's 40. Yeah, an 11-yard pickup, and another first down for the Hearts. They've got two first downs here in the second half. St. Teresa hasn't moved the chains yet, so, you know, the Hearts are really, yeah, again, they have, they have gotten things a little more under control. Pontius lost the snap, and I don't know whether... He lost it or whether the snap was short. Bottom line is the hearts do recover, and the ball is planted right on the 40. Well, and remember, Jacob Foster, the center, came off the field, and True. I don't see 52 out there, so it probably is a different center in the game, something that we should definitely take a look at here. Good point, Dustin. I'll tell you, it isn't easy, and if you ever played on the line, or you were a quarterback, you know, that isn't an easy thing, getting that snap situation down. So, second and 10, no gain right at the 40, no loss either. Rolling to the outside and down goes Pontius. And Lou, who else but Denham Cook got back there in the backfield and took him down for a sack and a loss. I think Brady Stortzum, 54, is your new center in the game for the Hearts. And, and that was uh, Denham, yeah, Denham Cook getting in the backfield and blowing uh, Tanner Pontius up before he could do anything. There was no time. Denham Cook is a tremendous defensive player. We talked about the 3,000 yards and everything on offense. He is a tremendous defender and, in fact, started his career as a defender. Mm -hmm. 
for St. Teresa. There's a pass out in the flats, caught for Effingham, and getting back to the 41-yard line is the Hearts receiver, Caden Walls, and turn that into a nice game. See where the football sat down at the 42 of St. Teresa. So it improves things anyway. It's fourth and 12 now. Hearts obviously will go for it just outside St. Teresa's 40-yard line. 3.50 to go, third quarter. 35-0 St. Teresa, but been a much more representative football game since we got out of that nightmare first quarter. Now we've got a whistle, and the Hearts decide to call time. So timeout, Hearts, 3.41 to go, third quarter. St. Teresa 35, Effingham nothing here on 97.9 XFM. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Member FDIC. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located south Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. All right, we had a timeout with 3.41 to go in the third again. They've been taking breaks because it's warm and it's the start of the season, so we're ready to go now. 3.41 to go in the third. Let's see what the Hearts can do here on fourth and 12. Boy, it'd be huge to get a first down here. Potty is from the shotgun. There's the snap, looking to throw, steps up, puts it across the middle, caught out here, still on his feet. That's Dalton Fox. He's got a touchdown. Dalton Fox went across the middle of the field. Pontius threw him a strike. There was a big collision, Dustin, at about the 20-yard line. Fox wasn't having any of it. He took it to the house, and the hearts are on the board. Yeah, great run after catch. I mean, it was a good throw. Uh, Pontius steps up, throws on the run up in the pocket, uh, hit him, and then Fox does the rest. Really impressive play on both ends. 35 to 6. Score comes with 3-3-3 left in the third quarter. And Angel in for the extra point. It's up. It looks good to me. The officials agree. And the Hearts are on the board. Score comes with 3.33 to go on the third. It's St. Teresa 35, Effingham 7. Back with the kickoff in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center wishes area teams the best seasons ever. Evergreen has rehabbed to home suites for short-term rehab following hospitalization. They offer physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Go to Facebook at Evergreen Nursing Rehab for more information. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. Hey, the Hearts try an onside kick, and guess what? They got the ball back. Armando Estrada covered it up. So the Hearts got it, the mandatory 10, and then Estrada stuck his nose in there, recovered the fumble, or recovered the onside kick, and the Hearts get the ball right back right after scoring their first touchdown of the season. By the way, that drive on the touchdown, six plays, 56 yards, took 314, highlighted by a pretty pass from Pontius to Dalton Fox for 42 yards. Angels' kick was good, and the Hearts are on the board. It's 35-7. to seven. So at least they got something to build on, and now... They get the ball after the onside kick, and we have a whistle. And let's see what that's about. And I really am not sure. Well, I mean, it's, since the ball's right at the 50, I'm sure that it's at least a point of contention from the St. Teresa sideline. I mean, it had to have barely just gone far enough. Uh, again, Armando Estrada coming up with it. But I don't know if that's if that's – there's nothing to discuss at this point. The call's been made, so. Yeah, and we had a play and the whole bit. Unless they have until the snap of the football, but I thought we got the football snapped. Well, they're huddling up, so it hmm. seems to be. As Harry used to say, there's danger here, Sherry. So let's see what might come of this. 3.30, and they are saying, yeah, yeah, the heart's got the football. Let's keep playing. So that's basically what it is. So that means we had to do that play over, right? It's first and ten, right? 
Yeah, they didn't. That was free, free football there, folks. <laughs> so it is first and 10, and the Hearts have it right at the 50. It's 35 to 7. That's better than nothing. Here's the snap. Handoff. Westendorf got a little. Maybe didn't get a little. Might have not got back to the line of scrimmage. I think that might have served to fire up St. Teresa a little. Yeah, I lost a yard to the 49. So it's second and 11. Wind picking up a little bit. Yeah, I don't like that very much when I'm outside. <laughs> hmm. 3.04 to go, third quarter. It's 35 to 7. Hearts are on the board. Let's see what happens here on second and 11. There's the handoff. Westendorf oh. got pile drove. Is that such a word? Pile, dro pile driven. He got some yardage, got it into St. Teresa territory, and then he pretty much got picked up and dropped. Yeah, it got stood up. Christian Harper stood him straight up and then threw him straight down. Call it the 48, so a gain of three, Dustin, on that play, and it's third and eight. Yeah, three yards. And toughest three yards John Westendorf's going to pick up all night long, I imagine. And then, hello, and down he went. All right, so third and eight because they'd lost a yard, and then they get three here. Third and eight. Pontius in the draw in the shotgun, looking to throw. Steps up, gets away. Now he's going to put it under his hip and go. He's inside the 40, inside the 35, or right at the 35 when they drove him out of bounds. And that ought to be enough for another first down. And it is. Got himself out of bounds right before he got creamed, too, which is <laughs> what I like to see. Yes. We're both happy about that. So a gain from the... 48, 48 to, the, to the 34, they finally decide. So a gain of 14 yards, new set of downs. Yeah, 20 carries now for Pontius. Of course, a couple of those, you know, some hits in the backfield mixed in, but they have called his number an awful lot running the football. It is official from Flex. He makes those decisions, so we'll have all four baseball games on X tomorrow. Hearts drive it up the middle, get it inside the 30. Westendorf, a nice run on first down. Second down. Sorry. Gain inside the 30. Call it the 20. Where are we calling it, gentlemen? 28. Gain to the 28, and it's second and four. Pontius up under center. Quick snap. Looking, looking, there's Westendorf still on his feet, backs it into the 25-yard line. Boy, the hearts are moving the ball. Something was a little off about that play as far as the timing of it, I think, but but uh, still able to get some positive yardage out of it. They're going to end up setting this down right on the 25, so a three-yard pickup for Westendorf. Gets him up to 82 yards on 18 carries, and... Uh, Sets up a manageable third and one here, especially since you're well inside St. Teresa territory. You're going to be going for it if it does get to a fourth down. Without a doubt. All right, here we go. Handoff, or the snap. Here's the handoff. Westendorf, huge hole to the 15. Another first down for Effingham. Boy, all of a sudden, the hearts have turned it up a notch. First down at the 15-yard line. So Westendorf... Having a night. And Hart's knocking on the door here. Yeah, Westendorf knocking on the door of the century mark. He's up to 92 yards on his 19th carry. But, yeah, Effingham looking to chip away, maybe get one more score in here before the third quarter expires. Set the foot down, football down right inside the 15. Here's Westendorf again off tackle to the left side. Big collision. He does pop right back up. It's a gain to the 13, a gain of two, and it's second and eight. Yeah, he's being tied up, and then Noah Corzine, one of the DBs for this St. Teresa team, came in there and got a shoulder into him. Big hit. Boy, how huge would it be to get another touchdown? They scored. They got the onside kick. Score again here. Man. Handoff? No. They fake the handoff. Rolling. Pass across the middle. Caught inside the five. First and goal. Nice catch there. Caden Walls with the grab. And it's first and goal for the Hearts. They'll set it right down at the three-yard line. So first and goal for the Hearts at St. Teresa's three. And they restart the clock after moving it for the first down, and that'll end the third quarter. So it's going to be first and goal for Effingham at the three as we start the fourth quarter. 35-7, but the Hearts are driving. More in a minute on 97.9 XFM. 
Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Keller Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Member FDIC. All right, we'll start the fourth quarter. It's St. Teresa 35, Effingham 7, and Dustin and I are talking off air between quarters about what a different complexion this game might have had not those turnovers occurred on those first two possessions and given St. Teresa a really short field. Yeah, I mean, it's just getting off on the wrong foot. Yeah, and 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 at the time you wonder, well, is it just, just being supremely overmatched in this game? But I think... You know, as this as this second half has rolled on, you start to understand that, you know, we could have been we could be talking about a really different ball game, if uh, if not for those things. And and again, it, you're down four touchdowns with just 12 minutes to play. You may or may not be able to make that up. The odds are not in your favor, but at least it kind of gives you the feeling that you didn't come in here and just you know get boat raced out. They officially are calling it the four-yard line, Dustin. Okay. So it's first and goal at the four to start this drive as we, or to continue this drive as we move to the fourth quarter. 35-7, there's no taking that away, but the Hearts have had a 7-7 game since the first quarter. I mean, there's a lot to like about this game after the woeful start. And boy, a couple of turnovers, if that hadn't happened, who knows? Well, anyway, first and goal at St. Teresa's four. Tanner Pontius up under center. Hearts do that double shift to the right side of the line. There's the handoff. Westendorf got hit by yeah. somebody coming through there. Knocked him sideways and knocked him off his balance and went down. Elijah Wills. We haven't – he hasn't – been involved in a ton of plays, but man, when when he has, it has been an explosive burst into the backfield, blowing up plays big time, and that uh, that was one of those occasions where he got Westendorf for a loss of a yard. Yep, back to the five, got him off his center of balance, and down he went. So second and goal at the five, just into the fourth quarter here. Hart send two guys the left side, which you can do. I want to see what. I want to double check on this procedure play. Well, they're calling it on the Hearts. Hmm. That shift, there's nothing wrong with that shift. Maybe a third player moved. I think I saw somebody in the middle might have moved, and that's the problem. Because they had just done the same play to the other side yeah. of the field to play before, and it was fine. What a time, though, to get your first penalty of the second half. Effingham was penalized four times for 40 yards in the first half, but played a clean third quarter. But this one's going to push them back and doubles the distance between the Effingham line of scrimmage and the goal line. So from the 5 to the 10. So it's second and goal, but now at the 10, Potty is back in the shotgun from this deep. There's the snap. Hands it off. No, he kept. Westendorf was faked the handoff, and then Potty is kept, which probably was the good thing because they wrapped up Westendorf in a hurry. But I think it wasn't much better for Pontius. No. And let's see about the spot. We're completely dependent on the scoreboard at this point, as this is on the opposite end of the field from us. But looks like maybe maybe so, back to the line of scrimmage. All right, so no gain. So now it's third and goal. Again, the Hearts with the ball at St. Teresa's 10, but a no gain after a penalty. So need to turn that momentum around here on third and goal. Third and goal at the 10. Pontius in the gun. Send a man in motion. That's Fox. There's the snap. He's rolling to Fox's side. There's the pass. It's low. Fox dove. Did he catch it? I don't He did catch it. And that'll bring up fourth down. They're double checking about the spot. Gave him two to the eight. So it's fourth and goal at the eight now. Boy, the pass was low. Nice job by Fox of going down to get it. Of course, Dalton caught the touch yard, touchdown pass earlier here. 10.06, the pass, maybe he slid out of bounds. The clock stopped. 10.06 left in the game. And it's fourth and goal now at the eight. Now they say wind the clock up. Effingham does quickly huddle. They got the play clock going. We're down to 15 on the play clock. This is it. 
I mean, fourth and goal. Yep. So do or die here, friends. Pontius from the gun. There's the snap. Good snap. Got time. Look, and there's a pass. He's got him. Man. Oh, and it went right past him. Fox was the intended receiver, and it went right past him. Incomplete. And that will give the ball back to St. Teresa. Yeah, they Holy had the, cow. Had the right play dialed up, and Pontius made what, from our vantage point, appeared to be a pretty good throw, but uh, not but we, to be. We are a mile from the play, so yes. in fairness, we couldn't see exactly how much room Dalton might have had down there. We don't know how close the pass was. It came up empty, and that stops the drive. So it'll be first and ten for St. Teresa at their own eight. And they start this drive with 9.42 left in the game. It's 35-7. St. Teresa in front. They scored 28 of those in the first quarter. Since then, it's been a 7-7 game. Mount, let's see, St. Teresa drives on a running play to the far side of the field. And they're scraping people off, <laughs> off the field. <laughs> Good call there, PA man. Yes, tackled by a host of players. Greg uses that a lot. Uh, wish I could tell you more. I honestly don't know who carried. I saw I saw Cook getting up off the field, so I'm, we're, we're going to go for with him. safe choice. I'm for him. And they gave him two to the ten, so uh -huh. it's second and eight. And, of course, St. Teresa just trying to kill clock now. We're under nine minutes to play. We hope to talk with Brett Hafner. Where we're located, it's going to be interesting whether we can get him here. Well, the door, for one thing, there's a door down there we had to go through that had to be unlocked by the athletic director to get us up here. So I don't know. We'll we'll do our we'll do our best to, to work it out. Anyway, timeout on the field. 8:54 left. Back in 30, Caleb. 35-7, St. Teresa on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located South Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center wishes area teams the best seasons ever. Evergreen has rehab to home suites for short-term rehab following hospitalization. They offer physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Go to Facebook at Evergreen Nursing Rehab for more information. All right, it's second down and two at the 10. Here's a throw deep. The Hearts might pick this. Instead, it's caught by St. Teresa, and it ends up in Effingham territory. What a grab out there by Bryson Hendricks. That is just about as far as I've seen a human throw a football in high school ball. He was in his end zone or close to it, and he threw that ball to midfield. And high, too. That was something, Dustin. Well, and, and by the way, in, in at quarterback is Caden Wilkins right now. So he's the one who made that throw. So the senior says, give me some time here. There's the handoff after the snap. They run it up the gut, and that's Mr. Denham Cook. And he gets it near the 40. The gain was to the 49 on that pass play. And here's a gain to the 40. I haven't sat it down yet. 41 is the spot of the football here. They said 47 on the spot to start the drive, or after the pass play, Dustin. I'm sorry. No, I got it. So gain a six to the 41, so it's second and four. Looking to throw again out here in the middle, and it's incomplete. It went over the head of the intended receiver, and the Hearts almost had a pick there as Damon Calber had a hand on it, but it bounced off the helmet of the St. Teresa receiver. They had one guy short and one guy deep, and it bounced off the helmet of the deep receiver, and Calber ended up Almost with a Christmas present there. It fell incomplete. Stops the clock with 8.02. And now it's third and four. So let's see what happens here. There's the handoff. They run it up the gut. And who else? Denham Cook runs it up the middle. Got the first down. And fairly easily as he gets it inside the Hart's 35-yard line. My side official here tells me it's the 32 and a new set of downs here 
for St. Teresa. First two first downs of the half for St. Teresa here. Snap goes by the quarterback. He has to go back for it. Falls on the ground back at Effingham's 45-yard line. Big lead, big loss. And the Hearts got back there and tagged him out. And doing the tagging was Max Nelson. He's been a busy kid tonight. Yeah, I'll tell you, you had uh, – you had Wilkins panic a little bit going down to get that football. If he picks it up, he might have time to get rid of it. But uh, he sort of lost his footing as he it was trying to hurriedly grab it and lost a bunch. Second and 22, they throw to the flats. It's caught out here, and down he goes outside the 40-yard line. Good pursuit. Hiles out there for Effingham along with Blake Bushu. Hadn't had a chance to mention him tonight. Lake Bushu there on defense, and they spot it at the 41. So as it turns out, about a four-yard gain, and it's third and 18. Yeah, Zakai Hayes with the catch there, his second reception of the game, his first since catching a touchdown pass in the first quarter. Hart's trying really hard to make sure that St. Teresa does not get a first down here. Third and 18 <clears throat> here in the fourth quarter, down to 6.35 to go in the game checking a play clock. There's the handoff. Nope, he kept it. Looking to throw. Here come the hearts. He gets it gone and it's oh. complete and somebody make a tackle and they do and that'll bring up fourth down. I am telling you, what a nice effort though by Caden Wilkins for St. Teresa. Scrambled and scrambled and then eventually threw it left-handed and it was caught for a gain to the 27 yard line. And they call it fourth and three. I'm saying fourth and four, but bottom line is it's fourth down. They did get a lot of the yardage back, but it's fourth and four. Let's see what happens here. Wilkins in the shotgun. There's the snap. Handoff. That's Cook. They've got him stopped. No, he's still oh on his my. feet, and he got the first down. That is unbelievable. What a run by Denham Cook. Well, a run, and then he crawled the last two yards just to make sure, but kept his knees off the off the turf and. Un oh. <laughs> College coaches, I hope you'll get some film on this kid. Yeah. My goodness sakes, I know. College coaches don't often go see high school plays at a game anymore. They usually depend on video and all that. Well, find some video on this kid. Yeah, I mean, you know, the Effingham fans listening to this game, I'm sure they don't necessarily want to hear us go on and on about kids on the other team, but I don't know what else you're supposed to do. This is uh, – uh, Effingham doesn't often face a running back built quite like this young man and who runs the ball the way he does. They advance it to the 21. New set of downs, first and 10. There's the snap. They hand it off, coming to the near side. They try to turn it up, and the Hearts do a good job of running him out. And then Angel helps him down. As there's going to be a yeah, there's going to be a hold. Max Nelson was trying to come off of a block to to get a hand on him and was being held up. So I think that this is going to come back a little bit. So Christian Harper was the ball carrier. The flag's thrown at the 24. It is holding. It is on St. Teresa. And they'll walk it back the requisite 10 here from where the play occurred. It's back out across the 30 to the 34-yard line. So the penalty occurred at the 24 and then a 10-yard walk-off. So it's at Effingham's 34-yard line. Still first down. 4.53 left in the game. Again, in the shotgun, Wilkins looking to throw, got a man, and he caught it and dropped it. Great defense by Effingham. As the defender went up, two kids for the Hearts right on that play. Connor Simmons is one, Noah Jones the other, and they managed to knock that ball away. So the incomplete pass stops clock with 448, and that will make it second and 23. Halftime, Muhammad Seymour in front of Canton. 28 to 7. Dustin, remember when we took a trip to Canton once? I've been to I've been to Canton, Illinois, and I've also made the trip to Canton, Ohio to see the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I've got all your Canton we coverage. Went, we went to see the Little Giants. That was Mike McDonald's last game as the Hearts football coach in the playoffs that year. St. Teresa hands it off. They almost got him out of bounds. Now they do. 
as uh, he went a long way and didn't gain a whole lot. That's Thomas Pokowinski. Yeah, Thomas P. <laughs> yes. Lots of vowels in that name. Tom P. <laughs> How do you spell that? Well, like we said, <laughs> it's a gain to the 30, but that isn't much of a gain for all that running. There, he has to have some sort of a nickname on the team, right? Like, there's no way they call him by his actual last name. It just takes too long to say. There's got to be, yeah, po Pokey, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, the ball's at the 30, so it's third and 19. Here's the pass. Lays it out. Got a man. Caught it inside the five. Yeah, in his pursuit, Damon Calber was never able to get his head turned around. And, and get an eye on the football. Zakai Hayes, meanwhile, going the whole way with it, was able to make the catch laying out on the sideline, but he's slow to get up. He's hurting a little. Favoring his left leg. Calber stayed right with him, but was turned around and didn't have an angle on him. And nice catch by Zakai Hayes. I predict that St. Teresa is going to win a whole lot of football games this year. First and goal at the one. Well, the <laughs> defense faced with quite a challenge here. 4-10 to go in the game. 35-7 St. Teresa. St. Teresa's got a little bit of their momentum back. Now we've got a timeout delay a game. Yeah, I think it must yeah. be. Delay a game. Back judge signals that. So that's a five-yard walk-off. So that's a break for the Hearts. That'll push it back at least to the six. So it's first and goal at the six instead of first and goal at the one. Down to 3.59 in the game. Three minutes and 59 seconds. I have to try and keep my papers from flying off the table. That's Need more tape? I got yeah. a lot of tape. Now, nah, you know, it's it's mostly the ones that are in my hand that I have to hold on to. I can't tape them down. But uh, I never quite trust myself. But we might as well get used to it because we got a trip to Mount Zion in the offing later on this year. <laughs> yes, we do. We're going to spend a lot of time in Macon County. Here's the handoff. Somebody going to make a tackle, somebody going to get away. There's the stop, and they drive him back to the 10-yard line. Nice work by the Hearts. Great pursuit, and they drive the ball carrier for St. Teresa back to the 10. One of them's Angel. Ozzie Angel's had a good game. And they're not quite as far back as you thought. Uh, oh, gosh. Line judge only gave him a one-yard loss, which seems pretty generous, but we're not in a position to complain at this point. Edgar Castillo was also in on that play for the Hearts. Yeah, someone had a handful of jersey that slowed him down enough, and then, like, by the end of the play, three Effingham guys were on him. So side judge telling me it's at the seven. Yep. So second and goal at the seven. There's the snap. Here's the handoff coming to the near side. Now they turn it up, and the Hearts let him down at about the... Well, oh, he's still on his feet, and he scores. Wow, what an effort, Christian Harper, from seven yards out. He shook off some tacklers. You've talked about him kind of being under the wing of uh, Denham Cook. Well, he ran the ball like Denham that time. His second touchdown of the uh, evening was a hard-fought seven yards. So a lot of that momentum the Hearts had built up. St. Teresa's righted the ship, and that makes it 41-7, to seven, and now they'll try for the extra point with 3.08 left in this one. And try the extra point here. Placement kicks up, looks good, plenty good. Got through the trees, and it is good. So it's 42 to 7, St. Teresa. Score comes with 3.08 to go. Kickoff on the way in a minute on 97.9 XFM. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. Hey, great sponsors on high school football. Little squib kick and the hearts fall on it and maintain possession. Obviously, St. Teresa trying not to have a big return occur. Connor Thompson, who we haven't had a chance to talk about tonight, fell on that kick. And the Hearts will have the ball first and 10, and they'll mark it at the 40. Oh, wait a minute. They'll mark it at the 37-yard line. So Effingham will start at their own 37 with 3.05 to go. Listen to this drive, folks. 14 plays, 92 yards. It took 6.34. 
That's like some of those best drives the hearts have staged. Harper with a seven-yard touchdown ran the kick good, and now it's 42-7, to St. Teresa. Here's a handoff. Hearts have some new kids on the block. That handoff was to Caden Gilman, old number 22. Caden advances the football to the 40. So a game for the new running back, Caden Gilman, checks in. He's a junior, 5'10", 150, and he got three. It's second and seven. Pontius remains in the game up under center. Again, it's Gilman carrying the football, and he's got some good mo. Got it out close to the 45 before they take him down. I think it's a case where, you know, this game's decided. So you give a guy a few touches, make sure that Westendorf doesn't uh, doesn't get banged up here and ultimately meaningless football. Get ready for next week against Muhammad. Evan Weymouth's been in there at fullback tonight. Mentioned some other kids that maybe I haven't talked about a whole lot. Of course, the line, always the unsung heroes. I don't know if I've mentioned Chase Kiefer since I mentioned the starters, but he's out there on the line. Working at that guard spot, left guard. There's the snap. Hand off again. It's Gilman still on his feet. Got the first down. He's out across midfield and into St. Teresa territory. So a nice run by Gilman. And I want to mention Jacob Foster back out on the field for Evan So that's good news that the starting center uh, had to take a little time off, but uh, seems like he's no worse for wear. So that's good, good news going forward. And that run was pretty much behind his spot and then to the left of center. Here's Gilman again, still running, still on his feet. He's inside the 45 and falls close to the 40, maybe the 41-yard line. So Gilman getting some touches here, making it happen. Minute 25 left in the game. Again, we hope to talk with Coach Hefner on the post-game show. He always has 400 people after him, but he always makes time for us, and we appreciate that and trying to check on different people for St. Teresa as well. Thomas P. is in for Joe Brummer on defense. And this time, Gilman got upended and a loss. It ends up back near the St. Teresa 45-yard line. That is exactly where it is. Down to 48 seconds left. CJ is going to have Beautiful video footage for us on this one. Again, that YouTube channel, our YouTube channel. Hand off to Gilman, Caden Gilman, off tackle, got a couple of yards back. Inside the 45 of St. Teresa, might get one more playoff. Down to 24 seconds, and we might not get another playoff. Nope, still 30 seconds on the play clock. So Hart said, this one is going to come to an end right there. Final score again, Decatur St. Teresa 42, Effingham 7. Again, St. Teresa scored 28 in the first quarter. It was pretty much an even Stephen game from that point, but hey, congratulations to the Bulldogs. Post a win in their opener, and Arts are 0-1. We'll run through a mile of stats. Dustin always does the best job around of that. I'll recap the scoring. And we hope to talk with Coach Hefner on the way in a minute here on the Post Game Show on 97.9 XFM. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Member FDIC. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located south Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. This is the Pro Rehab Post Game Show. Pro Rehab is your best choice for physical therapy. Call 217-606-3004. All right, we're back at St. Teresa High School indicator. Final score tonight, St. Teresa 42, Effingham 7. Hearts 0-1, St. Teresa 1-0. Opener for both these ball clubs. On the opening night of what is officially the 21 football season. 
Miscues really put the hearts behind the eight ball. They fumbled twice on their first two possessions, gave St. Teresa the ball in great field position, and a good team like the Bulldogs took full advantage of that. Hearts gave them the ball at Effingham's two. A lot of teams can score on the two, and they did. One play later, in fact, they got a touchdown out of Christian Harper. A run of two yards. The kick was good. A four-second play. And just like that, St. Therese had a 7 to nothing lead. And then the Hearts fumbled again. That came with 7.42 to go in the first quarter. And that happened at Effingham's 26. Six plays later, 26-yard drive concluded with a 22-yard run by Denham Cook. Man, you got to see this guy play. He is tough. 22-yard run. Kick was good. That took a 2.16 off the clock. And just like that, the kick was good, and it was 14-0 St. Teresa, and we hadn't played five minutes of football. Then... St. Teresa scored with 3.55 to go in the first quarter at the end of a four-play 61-yard drive. And that again was Denham Cook, a 23-yard run. The kick was good, a four-play 61-yard drive that took a minute 16. Just like that, St. Teresa's up 21 to nothing. But they scored one more time in the first quarter. Came with 14 seconds left in the period. This time, a legitimate drive, six plays, 70 yards. Took a minute 50 off the clock, highlighted by a three-yard run by, Mackay, by uh, Zachai Hayes. And the kick was good, a six-play 70-yard drive. Took a minute 50 off the clock. And before the first quarter ended, St. Teresa already had a 28 to nothing lead. Well, obviously, that kind of dictated how this one finished up. But from that point, the Hearts played them straight up. The next score for St. Teresa came with 40 seconds left in the second quarter. And that came at the end of a one-minute one seven-yard drive, four plays, 60 yards. And that saw Mr. Spence, Trey Spence, score. And that happened at the end of a 40-yard pass play. The kick was good, and it was 35-0 St. Teresa. There was hardly any scoring in the second half. Effingham did get their score with 3.33 to go in the third quarter. At the end of a six-play, 56-yard drive, took 3.14 off the clock, highlighted by a pretty pass play from, from uh, Pontius, Tanner Pontius to Dalton Fox. And Dalton took it to the house, broke at least one tackle, I think maybe two, scored from 42 yards out. The kick was good. And the Hearts were back within 35-7. to But St. Teresa regrouped and scored again with 3.08 to go in the game at the end of a 14-play, 92-yard drive that took 6 minutes 34 seconds to complete. And obviously them taking that much time was time the Hearts didn't have to rebound. And as a result, that 6-play, 6 30-minute 6 34-second drive ended up with Christian Harper scoring from seven yards out. The kick was good, and that accounted for the final score as St. Teresa beat the Hearts 42-7. to Again, the season opener for both ball clubs. That's a look at the scoring. Let's go ahead and take a break. Dustin's working on a mile of stats. We'll get scores from Caleb and friends. That's all on the way in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center wishes area teams the best seasons ever. Evergreen has rehabbed to home suites for short-term rehab following hospitalization. They offer physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Go to Facebook at Evergreen Nursing Rehab for more information. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. We're back at St. Teresa High School in Decatur. Final score again, St. Teresa 42, Effingham 7. Hearts are home next Friday night. Home opener, conference opener, as they play host to Muhammad Seymour. They look like they're on their way to a big win tonight. But we'll double-check scores in a minute. 
And I want to double check with Dustin. Are you ready or do you want me to go to scores? I will be ready if you can kill like 15 I, more seconds. I can sure do it. I'll remind everybody about the Wooden Bat Tournament tomorrow. We'll have all four games for you from Teutopolis High School. Game one is at 9 o'clock tomorrow, T-10 and Dietrich. And then St. Anthony plays North Clay at 11. The losers will play at 1. The winners will play at 3. So we'll have all four of those games because of a rain shortened broadcast of NASCAR tonight. We'll have to finish up that Xfinity race at 11.30 tomorrow morning. As a result, we'll just have all four baseball games on 97.9 XFM tomorrow starting at 9. So keep that in mind. And that will give us time to do the rest of that Xfinity race and be ready for the cup race at 5 o'clock tomorrow night from Daytona. All on your home for NASCAR, KJ Country at 102.3. Now, Mr. White, how about some stats on this one? Well, I got to tell you, Greg, for a 42 to 7 final, the total yardage was not as lopsided as you would think. Uh, St. Teresa outgained Effingham 332 to 239 tonight. Now, you, of course, a couple touchdowns set up by incredibly short fields. You're going to you're going to have some things skewed a little bit, and also time of possession, which we'll get to here in a little bit. But yeah, 332 to 239. Uh, St. Teresa did run just 48 plays to get those 332, while Effingham ran 61 plays from scrimmage to get their 239. So. Uh, obviously, St. Teresa's offense is a little more potent, you know, on a per-play basis than Effingham's was. But, uh, yeah, you know, they both teams ran the ball well tonight. Effingham 164 yards on 52 rushing attempts. That's a 3.1 yard uh, per attempt uh, night for the Hearts. St. Teresa 151 rushing yards on 30 attempts, so basically five yards per run and uh, four of their six touchdowns coming on the ground. Uh the Hearts managed uh, nine passes tonight, five of those completed for 75 yards, and their only touchdown of the night. Uh, St. Teresa put the ball in the air 18 times, 10 times successfully, no interceptions, 181 more yards and, uh, through the air, and uh, two more scores. So... Uh, Penalty-wise, Effingham penalized five times for 45 yards tonight, only once in the second half, although it came at about as bad a time as you could, mm -hmm. right when they were knocking on the door of St. Teresa's goal line for what could have been a second touchdown. Instead, they got that uh, legal procedure penalty, and next thing you know, they're uh, turning it over on downs. Uh, the Bulldogs, six penalties for 35 yards. And I mentioned time of possession. Effingham had the football 29 minutes and 32 seconds tonight out of uh, out of 48 minutes. Uh, so they out they had the football for more than 10 minutes longer in this game. St. Teresa 18 minutes and 28 seconds. But uh, you'll have you'll you'll have some short possessions when you uh, when you get handed the football a couple of times deep in your opponent's territory. And mm -hmm. and and the Bulldogs, to their credit, took full advantage of those situations. They didn't mess around. And uh, they had a 14-point lead before you could even even blink an eye, really. And that kind of set the tone for this game. Uh, as far as your individual numbers, flipping over to St. Teresa here, Denim Cook. Now, we talked him up an awful lot. And 96 yards on 16 carries is, is not going to sound like a lot. But I'll tell you, uh, again, Effingham, I've been doing this long enough now. I've very rarely seen them go up against a physical specimen quite like this young man, uh, 220 pounds, 5'10". Just a squarely built, like I said earlier, it's like having someone swing a tree stump at you whenever whenever he hits you on the line. And, and uh you know, he had over 2,000 yards his uh, freshman or his uh, sophomore season, and uh, he came into this game very close to 3,000 for a career. I think he's probably over it now. Big things on the horizon for him. So, uh, yeah, 96 yards on 16 carries, a couple of touchdowns from 5 and 23 yards out. Uh, Christian Harper, six carries for 22 yards. He scored twice, bookending his night. His first run was a two-yard touchdown run. His last attempt was a seven-yard touchdown run. And that seven-yard touchdown run was impressive in and of itself. He uh, he really bounced off some tacklers and, and uh, shook some free from some people, so very impressive there. Uh, Bryson Hendricks, 32 yards on his lone run of the game. Uh, Joe Brummer, the primary quarterback for St. Teresa tonight, had four carries for uh, for. 10 yards. Our good friend Thomas P. had uh, two attempts for three yards. And Caden Williams, the uh, St. Teresa 
uh, I guess he would say their second secondary quarterback. Uh, he did take did take one loss uh, for 12 yards. As far as the passing game goes, Brummer and Wilkins uh, each threw the ball nine times. Uh, Joe Brummer, the, the the starting quarterback for the Bulldogs, uh, 76 yards on four of nine passing, including both of the passing touchdowns for the for the Bulldogs tonight. Uh, he had a 21 yarder and a 40 yarder. And then Caden Wilkins, 105 yards on his nine attempts. He was six of nine passing for 105 yards. Uh, he had some really good throws, and, and another thing to keep in mind about this St. Teresa team, uh, they had seven different guys catch passes tonight. Uh, Trey Spence, 49 yards on his two receptions, including a 40-yard touchdown. Uh, Zakai Hayes, three catches for 54 yards, including a 21-yard score. And then a bunch of guys with a single catch, uh, Bryson Hendricks with a 43-yarder, Matt Brummer with a 15-yarder, Christian Harper and Denim Cook with six-yard receptions each, and again, Thomas P. with that eight-yard catch. So seven different receivers. I mean, you look at uh, St. Teresa's passing numbers from last year, there probably were games where they didn't even throw the ball seven times, let alone have seven different guys catch passes. So uh, a very, very nice performance there. Uh, as far as uh, some of the other stuff, uh, Joe Brummer punted three times for 88 yards. That is a 29.3 yard average. Uh, Billy Geis, uh, really impressive in the kickoffs. He uh, had a couple of touchbacks, had a couple of times where he pinned Effingham back, and then uh, they squibbed a couple of times too. So uh, he had a busy night kicking off seven times. Uh, fumble recoveries for Hendricks and Trey Spence uh, there in the first half. Those were big plays for this uh, St. Teresa defense and special teams. And then a kickoff return, uh, a 17-yarder for Christian Harper. So there you go. That is uh, the, the, that is the St. Teresa individual numbers. Let me shift gears now to Effingham. And John Westendorf, what a coming out party he had tonight. No matter how, uh, you know, I mean, you know, you lose by 35 points, that stings a little bit. But for John Westendorf, he's always going to remember this because uh, as a, as a, uh, as a, in, to begin his uh, junior season, he gets his, uh, he gets his first major varsity action, possibly his first varsity action at all, and uh, had 93 yards on 21 carries. Tanner Pontius, the quarterback for Effingham, also had 21 rushing attempts for 39 yards. Uh, Caden Gilman got some time there at the end, 20 yards on six carries. Armando Estrada picked up 16 yards on his lone run of the game, and Keegan Baker, he lost four yards on his three attempts. Uh, again, Pontius, uh, five of nine passing for 75 yards, including a 42-yard touchdown pass. That was one of two catches for Dalton Fox. He had two receptions for 44 yards tonight. Caden Wells had the other th Walls had the other three catches. Caden Walls, three catches for 31 yards, and uh, Pontius, two punts. For 58 yards, a 29-yard average. Uh, John Westendorf had a punt return for nine yards. Westendorf also had two kick returns for 19 yards. And uh, Armando Estrada with a fumble recovery. And those are the numbers. Coach Hefner has made his way out here. Rather than make him... Yes. I don't know if we'll be able to stretch it that far or not. We can but we move might the be table, to, by we golly. Can, oh, we can we move the table. To. There's a good idea. Let's get our chairs out yeah. of the way. Okay. You're gonna have to bear with us, folks at home, because we're 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 repositioning things to yes. to, to make it so that uh, Coach Hefner basically doesn't have to uh, climb through a window to get out on the balcony that we're at. Maybe I'll maybe I'll take a picture of that <laughs> while you guys are talking because this is uh, quite a visual. I appreciate you joining us, Coach. Uh, once we got the table over here where we could reach you, it's uh, appreciate the folks at St. Teresa find this a place to broadcast and. So we'll say thank you very much, and thank you for coming up. It was a game where two big plays at the at the start, two big turnovers, gave them short fields. They took advantage of it, and you know we were fighting uphill the rest of the night. Yeah, it, it you know we we talk about it. You can talk about it all you want until kids experience it. Until they go through it, they're not going to know it. You know we talk all the time big difference in playing on Monday nights and playing on Friday nights. You know, we've got a lot of guys playing for the first time, you know, for the first time tonight. And, and 
In a varsity football game, the margin for error is, is minimal to begin with. And then when you play the number one team in the state, it's it's really minimal, you know, and you turn the ball over twice and give them short fields. And, you know, we had said coming up, if we want to toss, we'd take the ball just because we at least had some experience on that side and yeah. thought, okay, well, we might you know, get a couple first downs, get a feel for them so we don't put our 10 new starters out there from the get-go and see and see what happens. But, um yeah, there's too many, too many mistakes early. Too many things that, that don't uh, that don't allow you to win football games. And you know, it it's the same stuff that we say over and over. You know, great great teams do the boring things better than everybody. Well, you don't turn the ball over. You get lined up correctly. You you know, we're not we're not gifted enough to go from second and five to second and fifteen. You can't have penalties. You can't have you can't have fumbled snaps. You can't go second and five from the five and jump and get a false start and line up incorrectly and now be at the 10 like you we, you can't you can't do that against really good teams you can't do it against anybody and then we're just not right now we're not explosive at all offensively to make to make up for that so like I said you know so and we talk about it at halftime like there was no point in going in and yelling there's no point in you know, I mean you go in and, okay hey like and it is it's all fixable stuff it's it's you line up cor- incorrectly. You attack the wrong hip. It's you fumble. It's you get a you get a you know uh, two holding calls. Wh- whatever it may be, like we're, to overcome that stuff is 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 difficult. It's difficult against any opponent, but let alone against a really really good opponent. Uh, just puts you puts you behind the eight ball. Um, you know, and then and then I think you can tell when. You win big with senior with upperclassmen, and you can just tell a difference. I mean, yeah. the number of underclassmen that we got playing, and you can just tell like physicality and the and the physical part of it. But um, you know, it's like we talked about, and I knew they would do it. You just keep playing. You just you know, you keep playing, you keep playing, you keep playing, and and uh, you know, you don't worry about the score, you don't worry about anything. You play that play and go. And I thought our kids did a good after the first quarter. Did a pretty good job of that. You know, it was just you know. And, you know, we make a nice throw. Dalton makes a heck of an effort, you know, to get in. And then we, you know, Armando does a great job on the surprise on side, does a great job with that. And, and you're feeling some momentum, you know, and then we just couldn't couldn't carry it forward. There's still too many mistakes. Like, we, you can't give away possessions and you can't give away yardage. 28 nothing in the first quarter from then on. Well, it was 7-7 seven to seven for most of the game. They scored that last touchdown. So it, it appeared to me that – as usual, a Brett Hefner team's good at making adjustments as the game goes along. And I like the fact that, I mean, you can't ever ignore those 28 points. But from that point, it was a much more even Stephen ball game. Yeah, yeah. We just, and, and our, our kid, you know, they settled in. But you could you could tell, I mean, it was, it was a lot of guys' first games. And it was a lot of, you know, a lot of mistakes. But it's like we said, every, everything, everything is fixable. And, uh, you know, it's just to do it against a top-ranked team in the state and then next week to try and turn around and do it against, you know, a 5 team that's probably picked to win your league that's got 18 starters back. You know, the first two are a little rough, you know, and, and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll settle in from there. But we'll take, we'll take a look at film in the, in the morning. You know, it's never, you know, somebody asked me after the game, hey, what would you think of Tanner? Well, I, I, I don't know. I You know, he made some nice runs, but. Were there people open that he should have thrown the ball? I don't know. You know the protection breakdown. You know, so it's just hard. If you, if, you know, we'll take a look at film and we'll evaluate it. And you know, it's never, it's never as good as it seems. It's never as bad as it seems. It's usually somewhere, somewhere in the middle. And we'll take a look at it and get it fixed. I was pleased with John Westendorf's performance in running back. Yeah, we had, you know, we've been fortunate there. You know, uh, he, he did a good job. And Caden at the end, I thought, you know, mm-hmm. uh, trying to find, you know, and that's the other thing. You got a couple guys that you're trying to figure out. Where they fit in? Can they play? Like, where can they play? Where can they do things? And sure. um, you know, so Caden played some corner early and uh, didn't necessarily do anything bad. And we put you know Ozzy in. Ozzy makes a couple of really nice plays. Yeah, uh, so you leave him in. But then you know Caden's a pretty good running back. So then we, I was glad we got him some carries at the end, just because I wanted you know those guys need the experience. It's the same thing. You know, somebody asked me that after. Well. We kept going because Chase Kiefer and Kobe Coburn, it's their first varsity games. Well, they need snaps and reps. You know, we just need you. We just need to play. We're so young. We just need need to keep playing. And St. Teresa had a couple of kids who'd played a lot, and I'm telling you, I'm uh, I'm really impressed with Denham. Yeah, yeah, they're good. I mean, they're, you know, they're they're good. Uh, you know, they've got uh, 
Um, you know, and, and it's like we we said that two A to four A, the top teams can play with everybody. The only difference is, that even if you look tonight, they had more guys going both ways than us. That's generally the only difference. There, you know, if you're if you're a really good team at two A, you can, you can beat with and play anybody at four A, and it doesn't matter. You can start getting into five A and above, it gets a little different. But yeah, they're they're very good and very well coached. And um, you know, like like we said, keep beating it. You know, that dead horse. I mean, you just can't you can't do things that lose football games. And we did too many things that lose games. When you and I talked earlier this week, we talked about the fact too that. It is a game in a game in a season where you look at the long picture, yeah, big picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a and that's a tough part. You know, you and I had talked that you know there were similarities to 2018 when you right. got a small number of, of seniors and, and your schedule's front loaded and and uh, you know you you're breaking guys in. You're not breaking them in against lesser opponents you're breaking them in against the best people on your schedule and that's kind of what we're doing and um you know but we'll see we you know it's like we talked about you know ever since i've been here we talked about the biggest jump is week one to week two mm-hmm. you know and uh so we'll take a look at film i think we got out of it healthy we'll take a look at film and and um you know fix fix as much as we can and, and see what happens next week you and I talked about the fact that Muhammad Seymour is a load. They're winning tonight, to no one's surprise. And having that much experience back, you and I talked about experience and our lack of experience, and they have plenty of it. And so that's going to be something to think about next week. Yeah, yeah, we'll have our hands full. Um, we'll have our hands full for sure, but uh, we'll worry about that on Sunday. Yeah. Nice to be home next week. Yeah, yeah, it will be. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Brett, for Thank coming you. Up. Appreciate it. You bet. Appreciate your visit. That's Brett Hefner, Hearts coach. Appreciate him coming up, uh, wandering through good part of the school to get up here, and we appreciate him taking the trouble to do that. And thanks, CJ, for going to help coach up here. I appreciate that. See, everybody's a team. See how important a team is? You bet. Thank you, Brett. All right, Dustin, I want to double-check to make sure whether or not you got through the stats. I did get through the stats. The only concern I have left for this evening is getting you and myself back through this window. Well, it's going to be a lot easier for you than me. Yeah. I may just die for the end zone. CJ's not allowed to turn off the camera until after Greg gets through the window. There's a guy that I saw dive into the end zone on a somersault play once. And he knows who he is if he's listening. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. I we'll, mean, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll get, we'll get me back in there somehow. I, I caught myself looking over the edge of this balcony a little bit whenever you were talking to Coach, and I don't really – I don't want to go down that way either. I'm not really <laughs> – That ain't going to happen. No, so <laughs> – so uh, so we'll we'll get it taken care of. But no, all the stats are all the stats are red. So super. Let's check scores. Caleb, what do you have for us? All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Tonight it was Taylorville picking up the shutout win over Mount Vernon, thirteen to zero. It was Newton edging out Paris, seven to six. Cumberland gets a big win over Shelbyville, fifty-one to twenty-eight, and currently tied. In the fourth quarter, it is Matt Toon and Troy Triad at 13 apiece. Going into the fourth quarter, it is Pena leading Vandalia, 39-13. to 13. Taking a look at high school baseball action today, it was Altamont picking up the win over St. Anthony, 4 to nothing. As Greg alluded to earlier, Mason Robin gets the win for his dad there for Altamont. It was Calton Herrick over Neoga, 10-1. It was Windsor Stewstraws picking up the win over Brownstown St. Elmo, 14-3. In soccer action, St. Anthony got the win over Robinson, 6-1. Taking a look at some junior high softball action results, it was Windsor Stewstraws picking up the win over Titopolis, 2-1. St. Anthony got a great win over Diedrich today. 12-3. 12-3. Now switching over to some MLB scores. It was the Cardinals picking up the win over the Pirates in a close win. Once again, the Cardinals pick up the win over the Pirates 4-3. Currently in the top of the ninth, it sees the Phillies leading the Diamondbacks 4-2. Dustin, you're going to be happy about this going into the top of the ninth. It is your Braves over the Giants 6-4. And currently in the top of the seventh, it is the Twins over the Brewers Two to nothing, and that's the scores, gentlemen. Yes, Dustin with his first place Braves. 
me with nowhere anywhere near first place. Boy, what, didn't you say something about the Cubs being ahead earlier? Now they're down a touchdown. Yeah, they're really good. It's at, almost like they stink or something. They're, they're really good at not winning. <laughs> well, they kind of <laughs> kind of by design at this point. They sort of imploded. Anyway, bottom line is we have our season underway. Certainly not the final we wanted. No. But as the game progressed, there were some things to like. Yeah, no, I, you, I mean, it doesn't work this way. And... And moral victories will only carry you so far, but I do think that you got to you, you got to take something away from this game, and that's how you played second quarter through fourth quarter. Uh, mm-hmm. Effingham, I think it would have been pretty easy in a contest like this after the first quarter to just say, you know, this is this is a lost cause, and and I'm just going to tuck my tail between my legs, and we'll. We'll get him next week. And Effingham didn't do that. They played hard. They made adjustments, and and they looked they looked good against the St. Teresa team uh, for the final three quarters. And yeah, you don't get the win, but I think there's some things that came out of this contest that are going to contribute to some wins uh, down the road. And I also think that you know for for it being a small school, and I know that the people here in St. Teresa were worried about playing. Effingham because it's a bigger school, but I I really think that you get to the end of the season and this is likely to be one of the better teams that the Hearts have played all season long. And another thing that we talked about on the way up here is that uh, St. Teresa is probably going to win a lot of football games this year, and so you know you'll take if nothing else a consolation prize from from playing this game and and not getting the victory is it just still hopefully get yourself uh, you know seven eight playoff points by the end of the by the time it's all said and done so uh, those are the things you could take away from it you play to win of course but um, but uh, there's still some positives there and some things I saw that I liked uh, John Westendorf great game uh, defense clamping down on that uh, St. Teresa running game in the second half particularly and uh, and really Tanner Pontius throws throws a good ball and was starting to get a little more comfortable with it and I think I think nerves really contributed to some of those fumbles early, and I think that's the end of my ramble. But but really, forty-two to seven sounds really bad, and I don't. I, and really, it wasn't that. It wasn't like that. And I think there's a lot that the Hearts can take away from this. Thank you, Dustin. That's Dustin White. You're going to hear from him in the morning because he and I have two of four baseball games to broadcast with Matt Robinson and Mike Wilson taking care of two of their own. And those will all be on 97.9 XFM. To recap about NASCAR, NASCAR's Xfinity race got rained out for tonight. They're going to resume that at 11.30 tomorrow morning. You can hear that on KJ Country at 102.3. Because of that, we'll just have all four games from the Wooden Bat Tournament on 97.9 XFM tomorrow, starting at 9 o'clock with T-Town and Dietrich, then at St. Anthony and North Clay at 11. The losers will play at 1, the winners will play at 3. We'll have all four of those games for you on KJ Country at 102, or excuse me, all four of those games on 97.9 XFM, and that'll open the door for coverage of both the NASCAR races on KJ Country. So I want to also say thanks to everybody back at the studio who have been working already to make that happen. Thanks, BD. Thanks, Caleb. Thanks, Flex. Thanks to anybody else who was in the mix back there making that happen. And I want to say thank you to C.J. Schmidt. Good job being here. Of course, he makes his acting debut next week. So you can go to the face play any night except Friday night because you have to be at the football game Friday night. But you can go see him in the face play. Rumors, rumor has it you're in it. (laughs) So anyway, that's next weekend at the EPC. And that's Dustin White, and you're going to hear more from him starting about 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. I'm Greg Sapp. Final score again, St. Teresa 42, Effingham 7, Muhammad Seymour in town next week for the home and conference opener, 7 o'clock kickoff on 97.9 XFM. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Premier Broadcasting Incorporated.